test. Check, 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 check. We're good. for your favorite team alone at home introducing one location for our watch party come here and eat drink and watch our games with fellow fans what's more our parties come with great entertainment and a lively atmosphere that will make you feel like you're right there on the field upgrade your game day experience by joining us at el patron for our watch party on game day say you're a small business owner and you're looking to get your business in front of a targeted audience let me tell you a secret you can get a promo for your business on our games. And what that promo will do is it will give you prominent placement. So instead of paying thousands of dollars for a small business ad space, you're paying a lot less in our broadcast, and you'll be able to get your business in front of a targeted audience. Dear Rick, Mario, and Mark, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be a part of something greater than myself. I promise to put forth my best effort to learn, to grow, and to always look for ways to help others. I hope that in my actions, I bring excitement and respect to you and those around me. Thank you for believing in me. If you want to be a part of something greater than yourself, visit CFC of Football. For more information. Tired of boring animal shows that just don't capture the essence of these fascinating creatures? Crazy. Introducing our live animal shows. Our experienced handlers bring some of the world. All right, week one, CFCA, we're here, we're live. I have Brayden Newell with me, myself, Tony Allen, and we're getting ready to broadcast the Mid Valley Wolfpack versus the Reno Raiders. Uh, this is the, fir the third year of the CFCA, and it's grown exponentially each year. The first year started with five teams, next year went to about eight teams, seven, eight teams, and now we're at 13 teams. And uh, competition is looking mighty fierce this year. Um, what do you see, Brayton? Um, well, first of all, this is our first game. Um, we're going to cover just the Wolf Pack, but we're going to get every game. Obviously, we're amateurs, even though we look like pros. So it's going to be a lot of mess ups, but it's all meant for fun. So thanks for coming along for the ride. Um, to answer your question, though, Tony, uh, what I really see is CFCA just keep growing and blossoming. Uh, and I want to say that's mostly due to Mario Halo, the, uh, the owner of the league. Uh, he started in flag football in Central Valley and got it to a really nice organized dynamic and now that's transferred to semi-pro. Uh, every year it's keep, kept growing and it's currently the biggest semi-pro league in all of California. It has the most teams and geographically spans the farthest from Reno 
Reno, Nevada, all the way down to Lancaster in Southern California. Uh, so really a lot of excitement to look forward to. Uh, the really thing I'm, I'm really looking forward to as a native of Fresno is this is the most organized I've ever seen a semi-pro of Fresno team look with the Wolfpack. As far as the amount of players, there are over 50 guys, the level of talent, and even the way they actually organize themselves as well as work with the coaches. They've won three in a row championships in this league. Uh, and, but the funny thing is, they're not even ranked number one in the league because it's gotten so competitive. So this is their time to really represent the Valley and the CFCA. I couldn't agree more. They have, uh, as you mentioned already, the geographical location of these teams range from Reno. There's a multiple teams in Sacramento, multiple teams in the Bay Area, and they are littered all the way up and down the 99 from Modesto, Fresno, Stockton, Bakersfield, and then again, cuts off over to Lancaster. So as this uh, league has grown, um, it, like you said, the competitiveness has grown. No and, doubt. Uh, and I'm excited to see where it all leads at the end of the year. And I'm very thankful that you're here watching, thankful that you are part of our journey. And like Brayden said, we it, it, the two men you see right here on your screen are the two men running this. So our hands are limited on what we can provide, but we are trying to do our best to provide you with something better than what you're used to. So it's better than what we got last year, where we have better graphics, on and on, you name it. Uh, one of the things we do want to do too is eventually be able to get all the stats for each player. Um, finally, if you guys have any questions, suggestions, bring it. We appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for coming on the ride for us. With leave, us. leave it in the comments and just a quick little uh, game preview. We have, like I said, the Reno Raiders all traveled all the way from Reno, Nevada and uh, taken on the Mid Valley Wolfpack. And like Braden already said once, this Fresno team looks like the most organized you've seen in a decade out of Fresno. And my suggestion is, or my prediction is 37 to 10 uh, in lead of the Wolfpack. I'm going 35-14. If you guys also want to make any suggestions or what do you think the prediction is going to be, comments are open. All righty. We'll see you guys shortly. I think we got to switch sides on. Prediction is 37 uh, in lead, uh, 3514. If you guys also want to make any suggestions or what you think the prediction is going to be, comments are open. All right, we'll see you guys shortly. That was fun. <laughs> So there's the chain gang making their way. Anthony Worthy Sr. boots the ball away. Got a little pooch kick. Oh, fumble. And the Wolfpack recovers. The Wolfpack defense was ready to go take the ball away, but the special teams did it for them. I'll probably switch sides. I'm gonna have to stay right here. All righty. Well, just like that, you thought you were gonna see the Reno Raiders start with the ball, and the Mid Valley Wolfpack is gonna go ahead and start this game with the ball at the 25-yard line. Tyrone Williams Jr., the Visalia native, is gonna go ahead and call that first play for the Mid Valley Wolfpack this year. I wouldn't be surprised if 
Wolfpack is doing their darndest to start strong in the running game. So, Tony, uh, the Wolfpack has a new quarterback this year, Tyrone Williams. Uh, he's from Visalia. He played at Azusa Pacific in SoCal. Uh, he actually had an NFL tryout. Uh, so he's their first-year guy and really talented guy. And right off the bat, Mid Valley Wolfpack with a run. That's going to be a gain of five yards. The first run of the day is Maurice McLean, straight out of Madera South. Yeah, Maurice, uh, he's a really solid athlete, man. All around guy. Um, mostly, I would say, the speed, quick cut kind of guy, but he still has a lot of virtual, uh, versatile attributes. Bringing up a second and five right now. Tyrone in shotgun. <laughs> McLean on his left hand side, trip bunch to the left. Tyrone with the ball, looks right, throws it right, little high. That's going to be intended for Anthony Worthy Jr. So that was Anthony Worthy Jr. And if any of you are a fan of the NFL draft, specifically the combine, his older brother, who just graduated from Texas University, uh, was Xavier Worthy. Uh, and he just set the all-time record for the NFL 40 with a 4.21 time. A lot of people are talking about him. They say that he's probably going to get drafted. Uh, high second round is the biggest prediction. But his brother and actual his father, a worthy senior who plays on defense, both have it in the genes. And you'll just see it more as you go today. Reno looking like they're trying to bring pressure. Williams sees it, skates up out of it, throws it to the end zone, and that is going to be a dropped pass. Would have been a touchdown if he was able to hold it. Looks like Austin Barkley out of Selma just barely missed that little butter on the fingertips. And that's what I'm talking about. You see with Tyrone, he, he's the real deal. He has a strong arm. That was on the line at the 30-yard line in the back of the end zone. Um, Barkley, Austin Barkley, he actually is, is one of the more sure-handed guys. It was a a little high, but he, he still should have had it. Um, first game, but I think as their chemistry goes along through the season, you're going to see more connections. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't agree more with you right here, Braden. And the Wolfpack on first down ran big chunk play, five yards, pass, pass, pass. I hope that if they get this first down, they're able to establish the run again. A oh, wide open, and that wide is a open. touchdown for Anthony Worthy Jr., number one on the season for a 20-yard touchdown pass. And my prediction here, Tony, is that that is going to be the number one target that we see through the air this season. Uh, Tyrone to Anthony Worthy. Um, Anthony, uh, super fast guy. Obviously, it's in the genetics. Uh, but what got me there is how the corner just completely let him go. I mean, if there's any guy that you want to secure, especially deep, it's him. And Reno, that corner is definitely upset at himself for letting that touchdown just be so easy. But here we go with the point after. That's a Moreno Meja. Uh, he has been around in semi-pro, one of the longer vets. Uh, he's not really as big on the kickoffs, but uh, the PATs and field goals is, is the more his forte. Oh, a little bit of a high snap. The football god, Anthony Worthy Sr., making guys miss. This is what you see constantly with that family. And oh, that is I think that was a catch. No good is what the side judge is telling us, uh, even though you and I both believe he was able to snag that before the grass. I mean, maybe a little favoritism. Uh, but that was DJ Redmond, also one of the longtime vets, all-around athlete. You'll see him on all sides of the ball. So he almost got it there. I mean, it, originally it was dropped by Barkley, um, but still, that's good craftiness, you know. And that's one thing I really like about the Wolfpack is, of all semi-pro teams, like I said, I would say this is the best roster I've ever seen on a semi-pro team, at least from the Central Valley. And even their way that they're organized, uh, the way they, the chemistry they have, when plays break down, they still make things happen. 
And that is why they have been able to be so successful for the past two years in the CFCA. And if you go back to the third year, the SJVL, uh, success all around because they just have football players on their team. It's very reminiscent of what the New England Patriots were able to do in their heyday, is you put football players in place to play, put the ball in their hands, and they make plays. And that's what Anthony Worthy Sr. was able to do there. When the snap was high, he wasn't able to grab it. He was able to make multiple defenders miss and still have a chance for the two-point conversion. So uh, Wolfpack really starting strong. As uh, In case you are just joining us now, on the opening kickoff, the uh, the Wolfpack kicked it off and the, uh, the Raiders actually fumbled. The Wolfpack recovered, so that was a, oh! uh, was a free drive. They are saying the player is down, but 33 from Reno, Ricky Rodriguez Jr. Uh, he's feeling that hit. He's going to feel that hit for a couple of days. Oh, yeah, they brought the full force hammer with that. That was definitely uh, a da na 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 highlight hit. I, beautiful, Brayden. So the first look at the Reno Raiders offense and the first look at the Mid Valley Wolfpack defense of the day. <laughs> They're coming out at two tight ends, even balanced set under center. Looks like they're sending Williams in motion. Going to hand it off to the running back who is met behind the line of scrimmage is going to lose two yards on the play. That was Jeremiah Felice, the running back. Uh, yeah, not much doing there. It looks like they, it, it honestly looks like uh, the, the Wolfpack's D-line just totally crashed that play down. You know, traditionally you see almost everyone run a spread in shotgun, uh, a lot more receivers, but it uh, looks like Modesto Raiders are going a little more traditional. And what he meant by Modesto is actually Reno. We do believe that the Modesto Raiders and the Reno Raiders are affiliated with one another, but we are not going to be the ones to confirm that for you. <laughs> Another motion from their wide receiver, fakes the handoff. Running back runs into the quarterback, balls on the ground, and it does look like Reno was able to recover that, bringing up third and 16. Yeah, you know, I gotta be honest, honest Tony, I'm, uh, I'm not seeing a lot of good cohesion or anyone whose eyes works with the Raiders currently. Um, hopefully they're able to turn some stuff around. Yeah, first two plays on offense, going backwards, not how you want to start your season, but you are going against the reigning champions and that's just kind of what they do. Yeah, every play has pretty much been the Wolfpack so far. Simba Williams over here, number 32, defensive end, is looking to make his, uh, his name known here with the quarterback not having anyone in the backfield to guard for him. Looks like they have some confusion. That's not a good sign. Now they're bringing someone back, fakes a handoff, and what did I say? Am I a mind reader, or is that Simba Williams making the play? Yeah, Simba, uh, he's, he's the real deal, man. You know, he's one of those guys, maybe slightly undersized, but his heart's bigger than the average guy. He, uh, he brings it all, every play, Simba. If you're gonna go heads up, you better bring it too. One cool thing about Simba too is he's, uh, he's actually from Texas, Tony. He moved out here because uh, he met his girlfriend who's out here on Facebook. Oh, look at that. Happy family ever since. And so it's cool that he's able to bring some of that, uh, some of that heart back to the valley. All right. And with a fourth and looks like it might even be 20 plus, you have Jawan Breezel Jr. and Terry Robinson Jr. set to return this punt. <sighs> Came up for a oh no, doesn't even make it far enough back. And the ball is on the ground. Wolfpack finally picking it up, getting tackled right around midfield is going to be Eugene Dawson from West Fresno. Went to high school in the plane. Yeah, that was Eugene. He, uh, he saw the fumble. He was trying to pick it up and uh, do something with it. Uh, usually plays corner all around town to the guy too. I don't blame him trying to get a little extra yards. Punt maybe went about 13 yards in the air, if that. Not from the line of scrimmage, just in the air. 
Reno starting this game playing on their heels in every facet of the game, special teams, offense, and defense. But it could just be the way the Wolfpack is designed. So Williams again going to be in shotgun. Not a whole lot's going to change from that opening drive with McLean on his left hand side. Two receivers on the left, two receivers on the right, couple receivers with their hands in the air. And it's a designated quarterback keep, making guys miss. Finally throws it away, and the ball's going to hit the ground. I'm not sure what was going on on that play realistically because running back was a little confused and wide receivers were a little confused. Yeah, me too, Tony. Um, it, it looked like it was a breakdown of whether that was a run or a pass. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the running back and the quarterback thought it was two different things. First uh, play of the game as the running back comes off for the first uh, time of the game, I'm going to assume <laughs> it's the running back's fault, but you know, maybe he just needs a breather. And with that, the Wolfpack's going to bring in Taji Scott. Credit to Tyrone Williams, the quarterback of the Wolfpack, for at least being able to get rid of the ball. No, uh, no bad play, just next play. And then that's Taji with a gaping hole. And that is going to be really close to the first down marker. Let's see where they mark him. They are going to say he's shy by one yard, gain of nine on the play. <laughs> Bringing up a third and one. And like I said on the opening drive, the Wolfpack, uh, they're going to want to establish that run. Uh, they have a, I don't want to say a new toy at quarterback, but they have a quarterback that can sling it. So it makes sense if they wanted to bring the ball or let the ball fly. But you and I both know running the ball is how you win a game and a championship. Traditionally, but to be perfectly honest with you, Tony, at this point, it looks like anything the Wolfpack's doing is working, running or passing. And that's going to bring up a first down, Taji, with another gaping carry. Almost 10 yards plus on that. Yeah, Taji Scott, he's been with the Wolfpack, um, I believe it was the sec uh, since the second year that they were formed, uh, faithful ever since, and he's always been a go-to productive back for the pack. He's another one of those guys, just all around versatile running back. Good running up the middle, outside, running routes, and even blocking when need be. Williams with three receivers, tucked off to the right, running back on his left-hand side. It's Maurice McLean, back uh, one the of the game. faster backs. What One thing Looking I like to throw. Oh, off the hands again. Damian Ross, yeah, he made the drop there. Uh, him and Austin Barkley, they're the... Uh, the two spell tight ends. And I do appreciate Williams trying to get his tight ends of, of, uh, involved in the game here, but they are unable to come up with a catch so far early in this game. Still the first quarter, plenty of time to go. In their defense, uh, Tyrone, he has a strong arm, you know, and this is, again, semi-pro. It's not like they're practicing five days a week, so this is the first game. It's one of those times you got to shake off the rust. Any level you're going to go through that. Williams in shotgun, lifts his leg, gets the ball, hands it off. That is a, oh, Maurice getting so close to the five yard line, gonna bring up first and goal. Yeah, like I was saying, Maurice uh, McLean, he's, he's their speed back. He's their fastest guy in the backfield, arguably. And you see it there, as soon as he gets that open hole, just breaks and goes all out. Might not be the biggest, but fastest, shiftiest, and he'll make you miss. And the Wolfpack with the ball at the six yard line, actually, not the five yard line. Let me go ahead and change that. <coughs> Gonna come out in what looks like two running backs on either side of Williams, who's in shotgun, and then it's gonna be two receivers to the right hand side. Yeah, you got Darnell Leslie and Maurice McLean in there. Maurice trying to make guys miss, but the Reno Raiders making the first defensive play of the game to push the Wolfpack back. It's going to push them back about three yards. I think the Raiders just kind of read that all over, um, all over pre-snap, knew exactly where they were going to go with it, and the defensive line was there before the running back could get there. So the good sign for the Raiders, it looks like they're uh, they're picking up their mojo. They're uh, adding more intensity as the plays go on. That was arguably their best play of the game, so that's a good sign for them. Second and goal from the eight-yard line. Wolfpack's going to stay in this double running back look in shotgun. 
Maurice right up the middle again. It's gonna be a tackle by Quentin Taylor from who played his college at Wayne State. So if you saw, the, the Raiders came out in a 4-3 and blitzed their right, uh, right side outside linebacker. And uh, that was just about this close proximity to the run. So that worked out really well in the Raiders' favor. Um, again, you know, even though they had a hard, rough start, the Raiders are picking up momentum. And that, you know, having a, I want to say, at least a seven-hour drive. And yeah, that's going to wear down on anyone, the seven-hour drive. So they do need a chance to go ahead and get their legs. And for those watching, that's actually why we started a little later. The game was scheduled at 3, but because they actually got here a little late due to traffic jams, uh, the, uh, the officials started at 3.15. And while we take our first timeout of the game, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a couple of our sponsors today. More. Our shows are not only entertaining, but also educational and interactive. Experience the wonder of the animal kingdom with our live animal shows today. Say goodbye to the hassle of finding the perfect ad space for your business. With our platform, you'll have access to a wide range of ad spaces at affordable prices, and you won't have to wait long to get your hands on them. Also, we offer prominent placement and targeted audience for your ads. You can buy ad spaces with confidence and ease. Get your ad space now with this platform and enjoy the fast and easy process. Come watch the game with us. Whether it's a casual get-together or a special occasion, we've got you covered. Foever is hosting a watch party for your favorite sporting event. So come in for food or drinks and enjoy. Like, as an audience viewer, you enjoy more. Yeah, appreciate no doubt. Just, appreciate that. Oh, what a tackle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good feedback. All right, with a third and roughly eight, the Wolfpack looking to try and score here so they don't need to double dip into their lucky charms getting another fourth down touchdown. Williams says, I'm just going to run it, and no one's going to stop me. I'm going to drag defenders in for the touchdown. I, I honestly don't think that that was a designated run, Tony. I think the play broke down, or he just saw the opening on the left side and took it. Because the offensive line, they weren't pa run blocking. They were pass blocking. As a fact, I don't know if you saw this, but they turned around and were like, where is he? And then they look around and see him in the end zone. No, I did not see that. I appreciate you with an extra set of eyes keeping me on my toes. And... Williams was able to scamper that one in for a touchdown and they're going to go for two to try and go up by 14 here in the fourth in the first quarter and we have five minutes and 47 seconds till the first quarter is going to be over and Williams is going to have Taji on his right and he said Taji I want you to go ahead and go out to the slot over there and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep Darnell Leslie on my left hand side Williams gets the ball surveys pressure does he feel it he does snakes out of it throws it and that is going to be good for Breezel. The two-point conversion is wonderful. That was Terry Robinson Jr. in the back, but I don't think that that's actually Terry Robinson because he wears 222 is his number. Oh, oh, there's two number two. Okay, I see that. Yeah, he's just two on there. Jawan Beasel. Yep, but it's 222. Two, two. Yeah, one thing you really have to be aware of with Tyrone Williams, the quarterback of the Wolfpack, is he's the real deal. Uh, as we're already seeing, he's, he's putting these balls on the line. He's got the real deal arm, and he's also got the size. He's 6'2", maybe 6'3". He has some pack and some meat, and you even see it in the last score. That was not going to be easy to take down. You're going to have to go after that guy like you're doing a tight end or a running back. I'm going to let that one slide. I'm going to let that one slide. No, you're good. I was about to pause you in the middle of that call on that doggy. I was about to, but I will let that slide. You said he was packing meat. I was about to oh. say. Oh my goodness. Either way, we'll pack. We're here. We're here like to that. entertain you. We're Backing here to entertain muscle. you. <laughs> He's going he deep. is gonna go ahead and kick this one off. Nice and bounces at the 20 yard line. Picked up by the Raiders. Oh yeah, nice running lane, oh, bouncing wow. off defenders, and is going to be brought down with some pain at the 33-yard line. That was number 11, Ricky Rodriguez, and that was the best return of the day for the Raiders. 
like I was saying, Tony, they had a slow start, but even though they didn't stop the Wolfpack in the end zone, that drive on defense, they were still bringing it. They made a couple plays. That was their best return. So slow start or not, the Raiders are still here to play. They're still swinging back. You're good. You're good. I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to jinx it. You know, the commentators jinx, but you know what we haven't had today? So no flags yet. It's been a clean game so far. We've got five minutes, 39 seconds left in the first quarter. That's right. The Raiders are going to go ahead and put three receivers on the left, two on the right, emptied out that backfield. They switched the quarterbacks, it looks like. Nope, that's the same guy. Yeah, same same guy. Little different looks left, looks down. Ooh, ball is just behind the receiver. And that is going to That was intended us. for Al Don Alnaldo Adams. Uh, yeah, they just didn't look like they had the same timing. Um, Shanson, yeah, Shanson Turnor, Turn or uh, Shanson Turn Turn Aura is the uh, the quarterback for the Raiders, uh, and it looks like they're kind of mixing up their f uh, philosophy on offense. They were doing a lot of under center. Uh, that's the first time we saw them in shotgun, so they're probably going to air it out a little more. And here we go again. Same idea. They must have seen something in the defense they liked. And we have Tim Brown down here. Oh, uh oh, Williams. Who up oh, there? There it is. I t I tried to tell you. I tried not to do it to you. <laughs> Encroachment. I'm gonna assume Simba since he was in the backfield. But you also had Lacrease Taylor with his hands in the air. Like I didn't do it. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Simba is definitely always bringing a hundred percent fire. Sharice with some oh. pressure, rolling into it, and that's another sack for Simba Williams. Let's go, second on the day, bringing up third and 10. That looked oh, like uh, yeah, half a right. sack. It looked like uh, Laquise Taylor, their uh, famous D tackle, was in on it with them, Tony. And I'm gonna tell you, if there's one guy you should really keep an eye on on the Wolfpack, number five, D tackle, Mr. Taylor. This guy has been the defensive MVP of the league multiple times. Uh, he's had the most success, arguably, outside of this league with other leagues, uh, including even playing some arena. Yeah, I remember him from last year. He was a wrecking ball, and it doesn't look like he slowed down even one tiny little bit. And with a third and 12, that is going to bring up a timeout on the Raiders. We need to talk this one over. And we're going to talk to our sponsors for a few moments. It's even better when we watch together. Tired of rooting for your favorite team alone at home? Introducing one location for our watch party. Come here and eat, drink, and watch our games with fellow fans. What's more, our parties come with great entertainment and a lively atmosphere that will make you feel like you're right there on the field. Upgrade your game day experience by joining us at El Patron for our watch party on game day. Say you're a small business owner and you're looking to get your business in front of a targeted audience. Let me tell you a secret. You can get a promo for your business on our games. And what that promo will do is it will give you prominent placement. So instead of paying thousands of dollars for a small business ad space, you're paying a lot less in our broadcast, and you'll be able to get your business in front of a targeted audience. Dear Rick, Mario, and Mark. All right, we're back. Third and third. Oh. Third and 13. And the Raiders are going to run it, keep the ball on the ground, keep... That was a jet sweep to Galvin Bailey, and they did that on third and 13. I mean, I I, I don't know what to, to tell you about that one, Tony. Um, the jet sweep's not going to get it. You need more yards than that. I, I look at it two ways. You haven't had much, much success today. Let's not put yourself in a bad position by throwing an interception when you know the DBs are ready for it. But at the same time, I agree with your sentiment. You got to do something a little more, I don't know. It's only the first dangerous. quarter. It's only 14 to zero. Don't, uh, don't be too conservative now. 
I get it. I get it. And the Wolf Pack are going to send Terry Robinson Jr. and Breezel back. And the punt is a little better this time. And it looks like Robinson's going to let it bounce and then finally get it. And he pitches it back to Breezel. Oh my goodness, what type of trickery are we watching? Breezel up the sideline. Breezel is going to take that all the way for a touchdown. That is a punt return touchdown by the Mid Valley Wolf Pack. And I'm going to say something, Tony, that is showing the seniority and mind of Terry Robinson. This guy has played in semi-pro for over a decade, and he also does just as well in semi-pro as he does in flag football. And what you saw right there, in my opinion, is a transition of the two different football mediums. In flag football, there's no fumbles. You get comfortable uh, back laterally in it all the time. It's obviously a little more risky in tackle football because it's a live ball if it hits the ground. But he's such a pro, he's done it so long, he was more than confident to do it, and it obviously paid out right there. And the Mid Valley Wolfpack absolutely dominating on special teams. And that is what separated the Mid Valley Wolfpack last year from winning a championship and losing a championship was they were the better team in special teams. When it came down time to their extra point, like we're gonna see again, they hit all three of their extra points in the championship game while the Buckeyes did not, and it forced them for a late game field goal that they've missed. I'm going to agree with you, Tony. I mean, if you even look at today, two of their big plays, getting the onside kick oh. and getting the onside kick and that return has uh, led to their, their big separation of points for the Wolfpack because obviously they missed that kick. Another low snap. They're going to have to figure out what's going on with their center on their snaps. First one a little too high, second one a little too low. Again, worthy senior football in his blood was able to try and make something happen again, but the Reno Raiders came in and were able to block that kick. And uh, that's going to bring up another kickoff that I have a feeling the Raiders are going to feel for that little bit of a late hit uh, that they were doing on their on worthy right there. And we're going to listen to our sponsors for a quick moment while everybody gets ready. Opportunity to be a part of something greater than myself. I promise to put forth my best effort to learn, to grow, and to always look for ways to help others. I hope that in my actions I bring excitement and respect to you and those around me. Thank you for believing in me. If you want to be a part of something greater than yourself, visit CFC of Football for more information. Tired of boring animal shows that just don't capture the essence of these fascinating creatures? Crazy. Introducing our live animal shows. Our experienced handlers bring some of the world's most incredible animals right to your doorstep. What's more, our shows are not only entertaining but also educational and interactive. Experience the wonder of the Here we go with the wolf pack kicking off. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ball's on the ground. Who's going to get it? Oh, goodness gracious. That was Mitchell Harris with the pickup, Tony. Uh, it looks like a lot of guys were looking around. They didn't even know where the ball was. Uh, Joseph Bernstein, number seven, uh, the up back, he was completely unaware that the ball was three feet away from him. And to kind of mention what we were talking about in break, we're going to kind of pan and we're going to show you how deep this Mid Valley Wolf Pack. Obviously, home game, travel well when it's home. But what were you saying, Brayden? Uh, yeah, Tony, people have to take into account not only is this the three P of the championship team, this is now the only team in all of Fresno. The last team that were the Vikings and the Stallions all formed together under the Wolf Pack flagship. And you have to realize this is over 50 guys here. That's the same size of the close to the same size of an NFL 53 man's roster. So the Wolfpack, they're the real deal. Ask him if he knows what happened. Why are we re-kicking? Why are we re-kicking? Uh, I'm guessing he was, was offsides, which means we're having to move it back. Oh, when they kick off guys, it's offsides. Yeah. We have uh, one of our ref associates in the booth with us. What's your name? Uh, Brock. Brock. Brock Kitchen has been an absolute helpful man today, and he let us know. Braden and I might have missed it, but it looks like one of the uh, gunners was offside, so the Wolfpack is going to kick that one off again. Pushes him back five yards, and uh, we're going to see what we have going on for us here. 
Right. Brock is running the, the clock for us with three minutes and 25 seconds left of the first quarter. Another kick. There we go. Caught that one in the air. Up the sideline. Uh-oh, is he going to make enough guys miss? Not going to happen. Tackle right at midfield. That was 29, Mitchell Harris. He was the guy who recovered it the first time. He's actually not the designated return man. He's one of the upbacks, which is the second to last layer of the kickoff return formation. Uh, but he's uh, fortunately, he's had his head on a swivel and been able to make plays for the Raiders and uh, get him somewhere. All right, Reno has to make something happen here. I don't need a touchdown on the board, but I need the ball to move in to enemy territory. I need the Raiders to kind of show some life to their team or it's going to be a long, long ride home. So it looks like they're going back to their traditional under center formation, Tony. And then it looked like the Wolfpack was bringing heat. They were able to let it fly. Sorry about the cool, great hit right there. Was that Anthony Worthy? That senior? is Anthony Worthy Senior. Senior. Uh, that's the father of Xavier Worthy, the uh, Texas Longhorn who uh, just broke the 40-yard dash record with at the NFL Combine. Uh, this man is 42 years old and still bringing it more athletic than a lot of the 20 year olds. Enrique Acuna was the one who was able to make that catch and hold on to the ball for a five yard gain. I'm gonna go ahead and change this for you. So it looks like they're sticking with their two tight end set, Tony. They've had some success. Let's see if they're able to keep it moving. Move the pocket, let your quarterback throw something and he does. It looks like he caught that actually at the line of scrimmage um, and was pushed back. The uh, receiver got like no right. depth on the route there. No, no, he didn't. The the <clears throat> the Wolfpack's defensive line, what what I what I've known all preseason, uh, they're men. They, they they almost looks like they're men playing against boys right now, and they're in that quarterback's face with the quickness. Quarterback has no time, and what. Reno's trying to do here is move the pocket, give the quarterback a little bit of extra time, but his receivers, they, they got to get some depth on the play because it almost, you might have lost a yard on that play just because, I mean, I don't know what's going on. You got the running or the quarterback rolling your way. You got to be ready for that. And another handoff right up the middle, make it through the second level, and that's going to be very close for a Reno. I think first you got down. it. I think you got it, Tony. Looks like sideline for Reno celebrating, and there we go. First down, Reno Raiders, first of the day. That was number 10, Aaron Dickerson. Um, from my understanding, he's actually been in the league for a while. Uh, he's one of the more vet guys. So if you need someone to get the ball to get the first down, he's a good choice. All right, with a first and 10. Under center, had some success, little pitch to the left, and that's not going to be a whole lot going on there. Falls back at the line of scrimmage, and we might be a little slow to get up, but we're good to go. That was Gavin Bailey, um, Tony, and yeah, uh, I mean, dude, that was a, first of all, that was kind of an awkward toss. Uh, it doesn't even look like Bailey was ready for it. Uh, and then he just pretty much crashed down the line and immediately this superior defensive line of the Wolfpack is breaking this offensive line in half, it feels like, any time they run. And with a second and ten, what is the Raider what are the Raiders gonna do today to help their team? Lone running back, fakes the handoff, Cycron number, rolls right into the pressure, and that's a catch. That might have been a yard game. <laughs> that was Evan Morarity, the tight end from Truckee, California, and that's going to be the last play of the first quarter. We appreciate you. We're going to take a listen to a couple of our sponsors as we switch fields around. With our live animal shows today.
Say goodbye to the hassle of finding the perfect ad space for your business. With our platform, you'll have access to a wide range of ad spaces at affordable prices, and you won't have to wait long to get your hands on them. Also, we offer prominent placement and targeted audience for your ads. You can buy ad spaces with confidence and ease. Get your ad space now with this platform and enjoy the fast and easy process. Come watch the game with us. Whether it's a casual get-together or a special occasion, we've got you covered. Foever is hosting a watch party for your favorite sporting event. So come in for food or drinks and enjoy the games you can't make in person. It's even better when we watch together. Tired of rooting for your favorite team alone at home? Introducing one location for our watch party. Come here and eat, drink, and watch our games with fellow fans. What's more, our parties are... Third and nine. The third and nine, Raiders look to pass it, get it away, and that is gonna be a drop ball. You know, Tony, uh, number nine, Shanson Ternora, he's uh, doing a good job. He's uh, getting the ball out. He's working with what he has. Uh, constant pressure in his face. That's not his responsibility. It's not his fault. And he's getting the ball out as quick as he can. And he's uh, actually delivering some pretty good little strikes here and there. Unfortunately, he doesn't have enough time, it seems like, to, to get the ball further downfield. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be timeout Raiders. And because of that, we're going to listen to our sponsors again. Thank you for that. Thank you to all. Feel like you're right there on the field. Upgrade your game day experience by joining us at El Patron for our watch party on game day. Say you're a small business owner and you're looking to get your business in front of a targeted audience. Let me tell you a secret. You can get a promo for your business on our games. And what that promo will do is it will give you prominent placement. So instead of paying thousands of dollars for a small business ad space, you're paying a lot less in our broadcast, and you'll be able to get your business in front of a targeted audience. Dear Rick, Mario, and Mark, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be a part of something greater than myself. I promise to put forth my best effort to learn, to grow, and to always look for ways to help others. I hope that in my actions, I bring excitement and respect to you and those around me. Thank you for believing in me. If you want to be a part of something greater than yourself, visit CFC of Football for more information. Tired of boring animal shows that just don't capture the essence of these fascinating creatures. All right, with a fourth and nine, Raiders are looking like they're going to punt it away, and the Wolfpack only sending Terry back. It's Terry, it's up to you. We don't want you pitching it. it takes a Reno bounce. Very close. Oh. Welcome to football, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to football. Yeah, that's one of those situations, Tony, when uh, the ball's in the air and it's a bad decision to touch it, you yell, Peter. I'll let you put two and two together why they call it that. All righty. Uh oh. What do we got going on here? Looks a little. Is he just getting the play? Okay, it looked a little like his left hand that was giving him some problem. Some problems, excuse me. But at the start of the second quarter, 14 minutes, 33 seconds with the clock ticking, the Mid Valley Wolfpack need to drive 85 yards to put the ball on in the end zone again and I think they're going to. I don't, I don't, I just, I don't see Reno stopping that right now. Uh, same Tony, uh, you know, it, the only time really the Raiders have, they haven't stopped them eat any drive. Uh, the, the Wolfpack have driven every time. The farthest field they've had to operate in today. No lies there as we let it go. No, interception, boy was I wrong. Boy, was I wrong. Looks like we're two for two, Tony. Uh, you saying that there's no flags, next play, <laughs> and then I say that they've stopped them every time, or driven every time, and here we go. And Mitchell Harris. From here on, we will be quiet. Mitchell Harris, who plays both ways, wide receiver and corner, is able to snag that one, who played his, uh, his ball at what looks like Langston University. Oh, my goodness. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oops. All right. So this is the furthest down the field the Raiders have gotten at the 50-yard <laughs> line. So with one of their best starting positions and the ball the furthest along, are they going to be able to capitalize? It seems like there's still some confusion uh, in the huddle as they break. Always one of the worst times. I'm going to guess run. Oh, and loss of a yard on that. Technically, that was a run. Mm, you're not wrong. Second and 11. Reno doing their best to... So, Tony, uh, in the comment section, uh, someone asked, where is Sam Metcalf? <laughs> he was the... Uh, the uh, quarterback for the Wolfpack the last two seasons, uh, who they won the championship with. And uh, to answer your question, he's pursuing other things right now in his career uh, with coaching, etc., cetera, and, and also his family. Um, but who he has taken his place, like we've been talking about, is uh, Tyrone Williams, who's made great plays, obviously, just threw a pick right there. But other than that, uh, as you can see, he's a really talented replacement. And one of the reasons that the Wolfpack has had success is when they do mess up on offense like they did, turn the ball over, look how the defense responds. They respond with two negative plays back to back. And that's how you, uh, that's how you build a championship ped pedigree like this team has displayed. And uh, Raiders, uh, that offensive line, uh, one of the most important positions you have on your roster besides the quarterback. And you're seeing it right now, why it's so important. And you know, and it's not like these guys and the Raiders, they're, they're not trying. You can tell they're, they're really going at it. It's just that the Wolfpack have most likely the best defensive line in the league. If not number one, at least up there. Uh, and like we were talking about before, headed by uh, Laquise Taylor, number five, their, their nose tackle, they're always going to get penetration with these guys. They say encroachment on the defense. <clears throat> and with the Raiders getting a free five yards, are they able to get another first down? Pressure gets it back, and that oh, is going pick. to be interception going the other way. Eugene Dawson. Eugene number Dawson is going to finally be tackled right there at the 37-yard line. And just like that, Wolfpack has the ball again on offense. One thing I, I've played with Eugene uh, in flag and tackle, and one thing I'll say about him, man, he is the quick cut guy. As soon as your receiver breaks, he's right there with him. Uh, one of the best I've seen um, in flag and semi-pro. And as you can see, as a result of his skills, pick. We have breaking news. Hold on a second. Block in the back by the return team after the interception is going to push the Wolfpack back five yards. All of our NFL fans that are watching our game today, Justin Fields was just traded to the Steelers for it looks like multiple picks, 2025, sixth round pick and a fourth round pick. Um, and that fourth round pick is going to be based on play time. So it does look like if you're an NFL fan, it looks like the Bears are going to go with Caleb Williams or maybe a quarterback at number one. I mean, everyone assumes Caleb Williams, but to get back at the game at hand, first and 10 for the Wolfpack. Williams again in shotgun, little uh, little confusion with Worthy Jr. and Breezel at uh, wide receiver switching positions around, but we'll pack with plenty of time to get this ball off. Send Breezel in motion from the left to the right. Breezel's going to actually get the end around, and he's going to make guys miss, cutting up the middle. Oh, no, making multiple guys miss. You're in a foot race with a Lamborghini, and you are not going to do it. That is going to be a touchdown. Juwan Breezel. Yeah, definitely one of the uh, faster receivers uh, of the Wolfpack. The only guy who might have a little bit over him is uh, Worthy Jr. Uh, but I actually even saw a couple of uh, plays last year. They, they used Breeze on the jet sweep, and he was always dangerous. Hey, man, but getting back to... Um, 
with the Steelers. I think a lot of people have been talking. I think that's a perfect move for the Steelers, Justin Fields, and even Russell Wilson. Uh, he gets a chance to to teach Justin Fields, you know, what to do because they have similar skill sets and styles. No, I, I agree with you 100%. I, I'm not I'm not opposed to it. Justin Fields is gonna gonna get that what they call the Aaron Rod Aaron Rodgers Jordan Love slash Brett Favre kind of treatment, kind of sit back, watch how pro, how a professional does it. And to be honest with you, man, I think that's the way to go. I think the proof's in the pudding. We're seeing more and more quarterbacks who have successes. They come to the league, do that, and it works. That was a drop ball uh, intended on that two-point conversion. That was a good throw by Tyrone Williams. Not bad. Just a little behind Worthy Jr. Uh, to catch. He still should have caught it, but that was – he was going fast. He's a fast guy, so – 10 minutes, 52 seconds left in the half. Both teams with two timeouts. And Brayden and I are going to catch our... Introducing our live animal shows. Our experienced handlers bring some of the world's most incredible animals right to your doorstep. What's more, our shows are not only entertaining but also educational and interactive. Experience the wonder of the animal kingdom with our live animal shows today. Say goodbye to the hassle of finding the perfect ad space for your business. With our platform, you'll have access to a wide range of ad spaces at affordable prices, and you won't have to wait long to get your hands on them. Also, we offer prominent placement and targeted audience for your ads. You can buy ad spaces with confidence and ease. Get your ad space now with this platform and enjoy the fast and easy process. Come watch the game with us. Whether it's a casual get together or a special occasion, we've got you covered. All righty, as we come back from our commercial break, listen to our uh, watch party in Fred or Clovis and another watch party in Madeira, right down the street from this beautiful stadium. Uh oh, make something happen there, Raiders. Make something happen. Oh, it came out. Ball I think it went out of loose. bounds. And it looks like Worthy Senior picked it up, but are they going to say he picked it up? Oh, they are. He picked it up in bounds. Yeah, that got it. Yeah, I don't know if you're noticing, Tony, but the name we're saying the most today, Worthy Junior, Worthy Senior. And I'm not surprised. It's football in the blood. You have blood that is getting ready to play for the NFL and these two guys who are are studs. I mean, they're, they're, they they really are. You just... If this fan, actually, I told Worthy Senior this on Facebook one time. If this was uh, like medieval times, they're like the knights that have that crest. And as soon as you see it, you know what that name means, and you have to give it respect. That's amazing to hear, Braden. Another change at running back, just kind of make sure everybody is getting a chance. And that's going to be Joel Smith. AKA Mick, Mr. Major look. Williams in shotgun. Joel on his left hand side. Williams sees the pressure, steps up out of it. He is going to shake and bake and actually be brought down out of bound. Nope. Little late, little late, but we're not going to call it. Number 47 of the Raiders, Trevor Gardner, he was the left outside blank, uh, linebacker blitzing, and he came completely untouched. I have to give it to uh, Williams. He was able to uh, still move, but no one was open downfield. It's one of those situations where I, mean, I guess you could say he could have run. I think technically he got a yard or two, uh, but good play on both ends for both guys. <laughs> Did he lose a yard? Did he get back to the line of scrimmage? I think he was able to get I back I think he to got a yard. I think that went down as a one-yard run. Wow, look at that. Technically. Technically. So that's going to bring up second and nine. Joel still on the left-hand side of Williams. I think I'm smelling Joel run right here. Nope. Boy, was I. We're going to throw that across the middle. Oh. Unfortunate. Yeah, that Good was defensive play. Look like that was actually a, a name I was hoping to see is uh, Rick Woods, number double zero. Uh, he's one of those uh, you better you can't take your eyes off of them slot receivers. Uh, you, usually runs great routes, great hands typically, uh, really shifty. Uh, I think he just took his eyes off the ball there at the end, Tom. 
De La Salle graduate. He's having his teammates watching right now, yelling at the TV, saying you got to have that one next time. <laughs> you got to represent. <laughs> Williams in shotgun. He sees the pressure. He feels it, gets it. He's going to dump it across the middle. Worthy Jr. making a move on the play and gets really close to the first down marker. They're going to say that he's short by about two yards. Yeah, good job by uh, quarterback Tyrone Williams of the Wolfpack. Uh, Trevor Gardner, number 47, the left outside linebacker, came in again on the blitz, untouched. Uh, Williams just stayed there in the pocket, calm, cool, collected. Dropped it off to Worthy Jr., who was able to pick up a lot of yards. Uh, and that just shows, man, this guy, uh, this guy Williams, dude, even though he threw a pick last drive, we all get knocked down, and this boy gets back up, man. He's got the real deal. Yeah, Tyrone, uh, he's definitely seen it and done it before, and, and all you got to do is just put the ball in your playmaker's hands, and your playmakers will do something good. So on a, oh, we got fourth and three. Excuse me for the wrong overlay. Williams is going to hand it off. That is going to be Taji Scott with a first down. Taji Scott right under around the 29-yard line to bring up first down for the Wolfpack. All the backs of the Wolfpack are solid players. Uh, Taji Scott, though, like I've been saying, is probably the most balanced veteran. Uh, if there was one guy that they needed to give it to to get that first, I think they, they chose the right number. Absolutely. Taji Scott, when I was making the top 10 plays from the championship game, he came in at number two with a, with a nice touchdown run. So very familiar with Taji here on this channel. Two receivers to the right, two receivers to the left. Looks like it's going to be Worthy Jr. and Woods on the left. Now Taji goes to the left-hand side. Williams has pressure. He's going to throw it to... Oh! I need to take out this freaking window. But Worthy Jr. just barely short. He barely, barely missed it, Tony. Um, and again, I think you have to give credit to Tyrone Williams. He's, he's laying out some good balls. I mean, even the interception he threw, that was a close one. Uh, but everything else, it had been very catchable balls for the receivers. Unfortunately, the receivers, I'm going to say they're, they're doing good, but they they can get up on their quarterback's level just a, just a little bit. Tell them, Braden, it's week one. Got to break the rust off. That's how it goes, man. Come on. Even in speaking, the NFL. Even speaking in the NFL. like a, uh, like an ex-quarterback or something. <laughs> <laughs> Three receivers on Williams' right-hand side. Taji's going to stay on the right-hand side. Second and ten. What is the Wolfpack going to do here? They're going to run it. Williams is going to drag a defender for about five yards. And before, that looked that, like a that again? That looked that? like a, that was Taji again. And that looked like a miscommunication between Williams and Taji. Yeah. Um, Jared Estabrook is the one that was able to bring him down from Butte College. Butte College? Same JC that uh, Aaron Rodgers went to. Oh, nice. Aaron Rodgers, the famous Green Bay quarterback in three plays for the New York Jets. How do you think that's going to go? Well, hey, and maybe soon to be vice president. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to get into politics, but I don't know about that one. Uh, it looks like Aaron might want to get into it, or at least anywhere you can get attention. Shotgun. Williams gets the ball. Has some time. Going to throw it across the middle. Wide open. That is going to be a touchdown for the Mid-Valley Wolfpack. Making up for his earlier drop, Austin Barkley drags a defender through the end zone to bring the total to 32 for the Wolfpack. Yeah, Tony, uh, number 88, Austin Barkley. He's uh, another uh, veteran at his position. Tight end. Uh, he's the guy, you know, if there's someone to throw it in traffic, he's one of the go-tos. Um, you know, it kind of surprised me that he dropped the ball earlier, but he's, that's his second catch of the day. First touchdown, he's been making it up ever since. And just like I thought in the first quarter, he was able to kind of wipe some of that butter off his fingertips, and then now he was catching balls, but he was wide open in the middle. Williams threw a strike. His number is 88. He hit it right in the middle of both eights, and Taji is going to now go on the right-hand side of Williams here with... Looks like they have quads to the left. Yeah. Technically, actually. Barkley can't go out for a route then. And that's that a run. be a designated quarterback keeper, and looks like he falls forward, and the side judge agrees with me to 
put two more points on the board to make it 34 to zero. Both of our predictions completely wrong. <laughs> completely wrong. Unless somehow the Mid Valley Wolfpack just leave at halftime, I don't think either one of us is going to be remotely close. 37 10 and 30 well i'll be 14. honest with you i i like i said yeah okay well i was being politically <laughs> correct i said like uh 35 14 okay yeah, but yeah. deep down i thought 40 to zero but i didn't say that but now i, I mean it looks like even that's going to get surpassed yeah and and for everyone if you didn't know the mid valley wolf pack they are ranked nationally um when we were talking about the rankings earlier we were talking about a player slash fan slash coach ranking and uh they were bumped to number two um again i didn't i didn't have access to who voted on that but i did see somebody two different individuals put the wolf pack dead last which to me you're putting that with people pure hatred in your heart. That is not any sort of football knowledge to put them dead last. I understand if you don't want to put them first, but to two people to put them dead last, dead last, just. So, yeah. hey, curious, Tony, um, is there going to be uh, another ranking cast? Uh, did you want to do it every week or still up in the air how we want to go about that? I am going to do it every week. Once the uh, CFCA added those two new teams towards the end of the year, I was not about to put a third one out a third ranking out but reno's gonna start with the ball at the 50 yard line again uh that was ricky rodriguez number 33 of the raiders it was a short kick he was a. Uh it looked like he was actually on the first line, maybe maybe second, but at least he was able to get some yards for him. That, that might have been actually the best return for the Raiders. And so once this week is over and we have all of the scores updated, I am going to go ahead and put out another uh, ranking. And, you know, obviously you want to put yourself at the top of the list. There's no knocking that, but just try to keep it legitimate. There's about three new teams and there's no reason that the reigning champs needed to be ranked last just <laughs> with the Raiders the Mustangs and the heat coming out of pretty much nowhere there there that was wild wild in my opinion uh, answer the question someone asked we have uh, five minutes 48 seconds left in this first half uh, yes thank you for that Raiders uh, have the ball first and ten on the 50 yard line they're going to come out in shotgun. Two receivers either side running back on the right-hand side. Looks like they're going to have Alondo Adams on the right-hand side in the running back position. Oh, take it back. About a four-yard gain. That's actually going to be number 10, Aaron Dickerson from Sacramento, California, Laguna Creek. You know, what I got to say is even though uh, it's been a tough road this game for the Raiders, I still see some fight. Dickerson right there, man, if you were watching, he lowered his head, man. He's still bringing the heat. And that's great to hear. You know, you, you make a, a long travel from Reno, Nevada to, to Madera, California. Uh, 34-0 with about five minutes left in half. I it, it tickles my heart to know that the Raiders are still fighting here. Shotgun, two receivers on either side. Looks like he's going to be rushed out of it. Throws back to the middle. That is a catch and another first down for the Reno Raiders. That was a really good move on Shan Centenora's uh, part. You know, it, as we've been talking about, Tony, the, the line keeps breaking down for the Raiders, but this guy, Tenora, dude, he has heart. He keeps finding the guys. He's delivering good zips on the ball, uh, catchable ball, and uh, even the Raider, uh, receiver himself was able to get at least the first down. Yeah, that was Mitchell Harris, who knew where the first down marker was, goes past it, turns his numbers back to the quarterback, and like you said, Tenora was able to throw a strike right where it needed to be with enough zip where the defense wasn't able to break it up. So with a first and 10 ball at the best position for the Raiders, we have what's been working on this drive. Two receivers left, two receivers right. Running back on the left-hand side, Tenora gets the ball. Looks middle, looks, sees the pressure, rolls to his right, throws it over the head of everybody. Ball intended for number 83, Evan Morarity from Truckee, California. You know, uh, there's a little high, but one thing I will say about uh, Tenora's game is he is really shifty. He moves in the pocket quite well and able to find guys on the run. A uh, little Russell Wilson-esque. I would even say he kind of looks like Russell Wilson a little bit. Not maybe not in the face, but the body type. What do we got going on over here? Oh, 
What do we got? You got up 34 is there. There ain't no reason for all of that. Two receivers left, two receivers right. That's going to be a handoff right up the middle. Ooh. And those linebackers said, no, thank you. That was Alfonso Zavala on the tackle from Kerman. That's my boy right there. Way to get some playing time, Alfonso. Was that number one who carried that time? Yes, it was. Was that Austin Lovati? I'm going to say Austin Lovatal. I'll take it. He gained two yards on the play. Yes, he did with a third and seven. Tanora directing traffic. Looks like most of their offensive plays have moved pretty smoothly once the first quarter kind of ended. Tanora with the ball, looks. Steps up in the pocket. Up. Is he going to throw it? Nope. Oh, you know, is he going to run it? He decided that he was going to throw it. Ball was intended for Jonathan Williams from Reno. A uh, little short, a little in front of him, but I wonder if the ball was on target, if it might have been intercepted. So maybe he let it. A no fly. catch was probably for the best right there. Um, the Wolf Pack is, is solid all around, man, including their, their secondary. They closed in on that. Robinson and uh, uh, DJ Redman to the safeties. To be real with you, it was either a pick. That guy catching it and getting clocked, but the best outcome was it hit the ground for the Raiders. Absolutely. Live to see another day. And with that being said, two receivers to the left, two receivers to the right. Tenora is surveying the defense, trying to find the hole, gets the ball, has pressure in his face, skits up out of it. And that is going to be LaPress Taylor with the sack. That was Jason Gonzalez, number 85, getting back there. Um, he is also another force to be reckoned with on that D-line, as you just saw there. And you can see he's beating himself up right now. He's picking himself up, getting his helmet off, because he knows he was that close to getting a sack. But you did put the pressure on, Jason. And because of your pressure, you ran the quarter, you ran Tenora right into Mr. Taylor. And <laughs> if you guys heard that. Yeah, Jason's down there saying it was the first game of the season. He still has some rust. Ooh, hey, speaking of uh, veterans, man, you see uh, number eight, Scott Thompson's on the sideline. Yes, he is. Good old Scott Thompson. Scott Thompson was actually the first one to open his doors to me. And I appreciate that. And that's going to be a nice run up the middle for Taji Scott. Looks like he's going to gain about five on the play. And that is going to bring up second. And we'll say six. Yeah, Scott Thompson, man. Uh, hopefully he gets on the field. Uh, I mean, him and Laquise Taylor. Hurry up line. offense right here for the Wolfpack going up the sideline. Good throw. Worthy Junior making guys miss. And I'm going to take this window and throw it away as Worthy gets his second touchdown of the day. A nice pass from Williams right in the bread basket of Worthy Jr. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, Tony. Um, number seven, Tyrone Williams of the Wolfpack, the quarterback. Uh, he, he has a strong arm. He has a real deal arm. A lot of times you'll see guys in semi-pro. It's maybe high school level at best, but uh, no, this guy can really let it out. I mean, there was, there was real estate in front of Worthy to go get. Uh, nice job by Worthy too, man, running under it, making the catch, finishing the game, uh, finishing with the touchdown with the run. One of the toughest catches to make as a receiver, ball coming up over your shoulder and no defenders around. <laughs> too much time to think as the Wolfpack, they're going to try a point after with Mejia here. Mejia is uh, directing traffic saying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten guys. I'm number 11. Let's get this through the uprights. I haven't had a successful PAT all day and uh, and we all know that makes and breaks teams so let's see if they're able to get it here you have the hike low the hole is going to be picked up by the football god worthy senior and he is brought down instantaneously and that looks like it's going to be a point of emphasis 
in the off week is uh, the long snap, no doubt, Tony. Um, I guess if there's one weakness that we have seen consistently with the Wolfpack, it has been the long snap. Um, it's being headed up right now by number 70, Jonathan Alvarado. Uh, he's an all-around offensive line, too. Normally, he doesn't even play center, let alone long snapper. So this is him uh, trying to step up and help out the team. But uh, that might be one area that they want to work on for sure. So it's 40 to zero right now, guys, and there's two minutes, 12 seconds left in the first half. <laughs> now we're gonna. Ah. What I think would actually be kind of cool about this, Tony, is uh, I'm pretty sure we're gonna get a chance to see the uh, backup quarterback for the Wolfpack get in, Nick Lippert. Um, He's a pretty talented guy, too. He was actually the starting quarterback at the end of the season for the Vikings last year before they merged with the Wolfpack. Uh, shifty athletic guy, so uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to see him in the second half. Mix it up a little bit. I agree. Nico, wonderful cat. Huge help. Mejia is going to go ahead and kick this one off. Right down the middle through the hands and that is going to be a wonderful fortuitous bounce for the Raiders fell out of that was fun Mitchell's that hands that, that Mitchell Harris he got out of his hands uh, bounce but uh, he got back on it yeah great way to be there right you get late, knocked right down time. man but at least he got back up oh we're gonna get flagged right now you get knocked down can I get up again uh, Oh, yeah, fix that, please. Thank you. You're good. All right, we got first and 10 at the 42 yard line for the Raiders. It looks like they just called a timeout. Raiders, last timeout. You know, one critique it seems like um, constructive criticism for the Raiders is it feels like they have a lot of times on offense where they're not on the same page. This is their third timeout they had to use, and it's all been on offense just to get guys properly aligned. Um, we're going to listen to our sponsors first is hosting a watch party for your favorite sporting event. So come in for food or drinks and enjoy the games you can't make in person. It's even better when we watch together. Tired of rooting for your favorite team alone at home? Introducing one location for our watch party. Come here and eat, drink, and watch our games with fellow fans. What's more, our parties come with great entertainment and a lively atmosphere that will make you feel like you're right there. That was the fastest timeout of the day, and because of that, we missed a sack given up by the Reno Raiders in one minute and 20 seconds till half. Um, yeah, what happened, Tony, uh, was that really was a quick timeout. We were actually uh, getting, uh, going through commercial, and um, it looks like the, uh, they just rushed through that. Uh, but what happened, so those of you who don't know, is defensive number seven, who is not listed on the roster, so I couldn't tell you who it is, uh, was able to get back there, get the ball, because it was a mishandled snap uh, by the quarterback of the Raiders. And here we go, Wolfpack. Two receivers to the right. Take it back, three receivers to the right. Running back on the left-hand side, Williams with the ball, throws it, wide receiver screen, and that is going to be a flag on the play. False start, Wolfpack. Push him back. Push him back. Oh, really? Back. I thought it said it did this.
So we got first and 15. It looks like it was a false start. Um, it was kind of a late, was it? Yes, sir. Usually they kill it. I think it just happened so quick they weren't able to kill in time. So the I think uh, the line was moving. Williams with the ball looks. So he's going to go deep again, and that is just barely over the head of the intended receiver, Vincent Johnson, Fresno native. Oh, man, that was a good ball. It looks like Vincent just wasn't even looking up for it. Yeah, it looked like he lost it in the light or something. That's exactly kind of what I was thinking as he looked up. I think he lost it in the sun, and then he kind of let up on the gas a little bit. And yeah, he probably that, wasn't even expecting it, to be honest with you. You know, you run so many deep routes again and again, and you kind of get... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he'll remember it next time, hopefully. Yeah, Vincent Johnson's actually a pretty good little uh, receiver himself. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. I went to a bunch of the Wolfpack's practices, and that boy was eaten all day long. Williams again with some pressure, and he's going to be brought down right there. That was 25. Quentin Taylor, linebacker from New Lathrop, Michigan, who played his college at Wayne State University, came in at the last play of half, and that's going to do it today. Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you being with us. That's going to bring up halftime. I'm going to kind of mute us for a second. You're going to watch some, some nothing for a hot minute. Redmond, a.k.a. Mr. Timothy Poirier, uh, safety, number 11. I want to give a shout-out to my family. Man, without y'all, I would not here be doing this, so appreciate y'all. Simba Williams, number 32, BN. Uh, shout-out to my daughter, Tania. Rest in peace. Brandon Williams, running back, number 48. And I ain't got no shout-out. Isaac Rivera, wide receiver, number 11. I just, I just want to give a shout out to my family and I appreciate it. They're my biggest supporters. Cool. My name is Titus, I'm number six. You know, everybody around here know I like fishing and stuff. I want to give a big shout out to my family. They've been a semi-supporter of your boy, but it's all right. <laughs> Yo, my name is Angel Figueroa. I'm playing number 29 this season, I'm a corner. And I want to give a shout out to my son and my girl. And I just want to know that I, I appreciate you guys and let me out here and be balling out and stuff like that. Uh, Nick Mora, linebacker, number 75. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the Wolfpack for uh, letting me rock again. We're ready for the four feet, man. We're ready for the smoke. My name is Joseph West, running back, number 38. I want to give a shout out to my mom for bringing me into this world. They give me as far as life. Yeah, I am today. What's up, guys? T. T. Brown, number three, DB. Um, give a shout out to my family. Um, I want to say 
thank you and I love you guys and thank you for just supporting me and allowing me to do um, you know the things that I love to do um, which is you know play football well Alfonso Zavala number 41 give a shout out to my kids and my wife I love you guys and thank you for your support uh, Nico Lippert quarterback number 15 Nathaniel Sandoval, number eight, defensive end, defensive tackle. Uh, shout out to the people who signed my check, because without them, it's impossible. DJ Redmond, a.k.a. Mr. Himothy Poirier, uh, safety, number 11. Want to give a shout out to my family. Man, without y'all, I would out here be doing this, so appreciate y'all. Simba Williams, number 32, BN. Uh, shout out to my daughter, Tania, rest in peace. Oh. Brandon Williams, running back, number 48, and I ain't got no shout out. Isaac Rivera, wide receiver, number 11. I just, I just want to give a shout out to my family, and I appreciate it. They're my biggest supporters. So, my name is Titus. I'm number six. You know, everybody around here know I like fishing and stuff. I want to give a big shout out to my family. They've been a semi-supporter of your boy, but it's all right. Yo, my name is Angel Figueroa. I'm playing number 29 this season. I'm a corner. And I want to give a shout out to my son and my girl. And I just want to know that I, I appreciate you guys and let me out here and be balling out and stuff like that. Uh, Nick Mora, linebacker, number 75. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the Wolfpack for uh, letting me rock again. And we're ready for the four feet, man. We're ready for the smoke. My name is Joseph West, running back, number 38. I want to give a shout out to my mom for bringing me into this world and getting me as far as life that I am today. What's up guys, T, T Brown number three, DB. Um, give a shout out to my family. Um, I want to say thank you and I love you guys and thank you for just supporting me and allowing me to do um, you know, the things that I love to do, um, which is you know, play football. Well Alfonso Zavala, number 41. Give a shout out to my kids and my wife. I love you guys and thank you for your support. Uh, Nico Lippert, quarterback, number 15. Nathaniel Sandoval, number eight, defensive end, defensive tackle. Uh, shout out to the people who signed my check, because without them, it's impossible. DJ Redmond, a.k.a. Mr. Himothy Poirier, uh, safety, number 11. Want to give a shout out to my family. Man, without y'all, I would out here be doing this, so appreciate y'all. Simba Williams, number 32, BN. Uh, shout out to my daughter Tania, rest in peace. Oh. Brandon Williams, running back, number 48, and I ain't got no shout out. Isaac Rivera, wide receiver, number 11. I just, I just want to give a shout out to my family and I appreciate it. They're my biggest supporters. Oh. My name is Titus, I'm number six. You know, everybody around here know I like fishing and stuff. I want to give a big shout out to my family and then, uh, semi-supporter of your boy, but it's all right. <laughs> Yo, my name is Angel Figueroa. I'm playing number 29 this season. I'm a corner, and I want to give a shout out to my son and my girl, and I just want to know that I, I appreciate you guys and let me out here and be balling out and stuff like that. Uh, Nick Mora, linebacker, number 75. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the Wolfpack for uh, letting me rock again. And we're ready for the four feet, man. We're ready for the smoke. My name is Joseph West, running back, number 38. I want to give a shout out to my mom for bringing me into this world and getting me as far as life that I am today. What's up guys, T, T Brown, number three, DB. Um, give a shout out to my family. Um, I want to say thank you and I love you guys and thank you for just supporting me and allowing me to do um, you know, the things that I love to do, um, which is you know play football. Well Alfonso Zavala, number 41. Give a shout out to my kids and my wife. I love you guys and thank you for your support. Uh, Nico Lippert, quarterback, number 15. Nathaniel Sandoval, number eight, defensive end, defensive tackle. Uh, shout out to the people who signed my check because without them, it's impossible. DJ Redmond, AKA Mr. Himothy Poirier, uh, safety, number 11. Want to give a shout out to my family, man. Without y'all, I would out here be doing this. So appreciate y'all. Simba Williams, number 32, BN. Uh, shout out to my daughter, Tania. Rest in peace. 
Oh, yeah, Brandon Williams, running back, but, number 48. And I ain't got no shot out. Isaac Rivera, wide receiver, number 11. I just, I just want to give a shout out to my family and I appreciate it. They're my biggest supporters. So, my name is Titus, I'm number six. You know, everybody around here know I like fishing and stuff. I want to give a big shout out to my family. They've been a semi-supporter of your boy, but it's all right. <laughs> Yo, my name is Angel Figueroa. I'm playing number 29 this season, I'm a corner. And I want to give a shout out to my son and my girl. And I just want to know that I, I appreciate you guys and let me out here and be balling out and stuff like that. Uh, Nick Mora, linebacker, number 75. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the Wolfpack for uh, letting me rock again. And we're ready for the four feet, man. We're ready for the smoke. My name is Joseph West, running back, number 38. I want to give a shout out to my mom for bringing me into this world. They give me as far as life. Yeah, I am today. What's up, guys? T. T. Brown, number three, DB. Um, give a shout out to my family. Um, I want to say thank you, and I love you guys, and thank you for just supporting me and allowing me to do, um, you know, the things that I love to do, um, which is, you know, play football. Well Alfonso Zavala, number 41. Give a shout out to my kids and my wife. I love you guys, and thank you for your support. Uh, Nico Lippert, quarterback, number 15. Nathaniel Sandoval, number eight, defensive end, defensive tackle. Uh, shout out to the people who signed my check, because without them, this ain't possible. DJ Redman, a.k.a. Mr. Timothy Poirier, uh, safety, number 11. Want to give a shout out to my family. Man, without y'all, I would out here be doing this, so appreciate y'all. Simba Williams, number 32, DN. Uh, shout out to my daughter, Tania, rest in peace. Oh. Brandon Williams, running back, but number 48, and I ain't got no shot out. Isaac Rivera, wide receiver, number 11. I just, I just want to give a shout out to my family, and I appreciate it. They're my biggest supporters. Oh. My name is Titus. I'm number six. You know, everybody around here know I like fishing and stuff. I want to give a big shout out to my family. They've been a semi-supporter of your boy, but it's all right. Yo, my name is Angel Figueroa. I'm playing number 29 this season. I'm a corner. And I want to give a shout out to my son and my girl. And I just want to know that I, I appreciate you guys and let me out here and be balling out and stuff like that. Uh, Nick Mora, linebacker, number 75. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the Wolfpack for uh, letting me rock again. We're ready for the four feet, man. We're ready for the smoke. My name is Joseph West, running back, number 38. I want to give a shout out to my mom for bringing me into this world and giving me as far as life. Yeah, I am today. What's up, guys? T. T. Brown, number three, DB. Um, give a shout out to my family. Um, I want to say thank you and I love you guys and thank you for just supporting me and allowing me to do, um, you know, the things that I love to do, um, which is, you know, play football. Well Alfonso Zavala, number 41. Give a shout out to my kids and my wife. I love you guys and thank you for your support. Uh, Nico Lippert, quarterback, number 15. Nathaniel Sandoval, number eight, defensive end, defensive tackle. Uh, shout out to the people who signed my check, because without them, this ain't possible. DJ Redman, a.k.a. Mr. Timothy Poirier, uh, safety, number 11. Want to give a shout out to my family. Man, without y'all, I would out here be doing this, so appreciate y'all. Simba Williams, number 32, DN. Uh, shout out to my daughter, Tania, rest in peace. Oh. Brandon Williams, running back, number 48, and I ain't got no shout out. Isaac Rivera, wide receiver.
Test. Yeah, it's good. It's green. Test. Yeah, it sounds good. So Scott showed up late. Um, we you better right get now? in. Yeah, we're on right now. Well, hey guys. Um, the Wolfpack is going to get the ball second half, as you see there in the kickoff return. Uh, and they're going to switch quarterbacks to the uh, second string, Nico Lippert. Uh, he played quarterback in high school in Riverside, California. He's been in Fresno for going on four or five years now. Uh, good guy, has a cool style, all around athlete. So it's cool, you know, obviously this, sometimes, you know, it's, it's a big win, uh, margin of a point difference, but what's cool is you get to see other players get in too, see what they got. Updating all the scoreboards. We are in the third quarter. Kickoff is underway. Both teams have all of their timeouts, and the Raiders are going to pull a beat shitty Giants and go onside it. No, I'm just kidding. Only the Giants. Uh oh. Touchback. Pack will start with the ball. Was it the 20? Yeah, that was Damian Ross, number 28, but uh, it's just one of those awkward balances. Probably just for the best, let it go back. I don't think he even touched it. Well, obviously, if he did touch it, then it wouldn't be an automatic touchback. <laughs> Ball's at the 25-yard line. Lippert, is Lippert really getting in right now? That's what it looked like. There he is, Mr. trotting on the field. Yeah, the 20, 25 oh. Okay, got you, it is 20. I like it, I like it a lot. Number 16 quarterback, Nico Lippert, goes to the huddle, calls the play. Looks like he had some time over at Cuesta College. <laughs> He actually played some uh, baseball at Fresno City College. That was one of the uh, reasons he came up. That is one of my favorite things to hear. A quarterback who played baseball. It almost seems like all the best do. Right? Tom Brady, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, on and on. The reality is the throwing motion isn't too dissimilar. It's saying, I believe, illegal substitution, if I'm reading my hand. It was, it was against the Raiders. Yeah, so free five yards. Let me go ahead and change that. Wrong so button. first and five. Coming trips right, back right. Shotgun. Was he able to gain a yard on that? Uh, yeah, he got a, looks like a yard or two. Um, number 13, Maurice McLean, their, uh, their speed back. Well, uh, actually, it looks like it, there's, there's no gain. Okay. I can dig it. I can dig it. You're going to put Barkley back in, and you're going to have Jawan Breezel kind of take a break on this play. Lippert breaks his huddle. Worthy Jr. far out to the left. With the ball, quick pitch. Barkley again with another one, making defenders fall off of him. And he's staying on his feet, finally going to be brought down at the 43 yard line. Goodness gracious. Good stuff, Austin Barkley. Rumbling and bumbling and stumbling. Dragging All the way, man. He just kept lifting the knees, kept driving. Definitely a scrappy guy. He uh, he played his high school ball at uh, Selma High School. Uh, you know, and even though they're a smaller town, one thing I will say is Selma High players are typically pretty freaking scrappy. Uh, 
All right, Lippert's gonna go ahead and he's gonna break his huddle again, put Taji on his right hand side. Worthy Jr. is gonna be far out to the left by himself. Taji's gonna get that and Taji is going to run up the sideline and everyone says first down. Taji a little slow to get up there, but he's already on the sideline, so he's just going to go ahead and take that play off. And Taji, he's been getting the most carries. He's been the uh, RB number one today, probably most likely through the season. Looks like a little hitch in his left leg as he go as he's going to take this more than likely afternoon off with a forty to zero lead. I don't. I don't want to see him back into you. I mean, at this point, there's there's really no point. Like I said, he's, he's going to be carrying the majority of the load for the pack this season. So just game one, you're already up. You're good. Take a rest, brother. Flipper. They had, that is 12 guys on the field. The Wolfpack had 12 guys. And the refs saw that. Threw the flag on the play. My guest, Tony, is Joey Haas, the offensive coordinator of the Wolfpack, is trying to get a lot of the uh, other guys some, some PT, get them some plays, and uh, so, you know, maybe they're a little more dry, a little, uh, little rust to kick off in uh, exchanging personnel. I mean, it's all these little things. Anyone who's played the game knows you're always going to have little mess-ups, especially in the beginning of the season. Yeah, no, I, I agree with what you're saying, and... Just like you said, 12 men on the field is going to go ahead and push. Is that a 10-yard penalty or is that a 15-yard penalty? We ask our official in the booth. 10? Because it, now it's uh, just after the snap, it's uh, it legal participation. Mm, gotcha. We do down, though. Not lost to down, so that's good. So it looks like we have a second and 20. My assumption is they're going to come out passing. And we're going to see Lippert let it fly. It looks like they're mixing up their formations too, Tony. Uh, they got their tight end set. And they decide that they're just going to go ahead and run it. Going to get about seven on that play. Looks like they put Darnell Leslie in charge of that one. Darnell Leslie played some time at Fresno State, it says here. That yeah, makes sense, I guess. You know, I mean, sure thing, just get some... Uh, some yards back for sure. Get comfortable with the third and long. I don't know if the guy on the sideline changed it. Maybe, 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 maybe it should have been first the first down. Yeah, I think, I, that, I think that's what yeah. it was. So that was first to 20 tech. Yes. Yeah. So, oh, no, wait. They're shifting it right now. Nope. Okay, so third and, all back. Third and 13. All back. So this is obviously a passing situation. And now we're going to get a timeout by the Wolfpack here. Yeah, it's, it's like we were saying, Tony. Uh, now that they're, they're going with their second teams and switching some other guys in, there's a little breakdown in communication, a little confusion. And looking right now at Lippert talk to uh, offensive coordinator Joey Haas, it's, I'm, it's looking like there's some uh, play breakdown, some in uh, continuity where my guess is the plays that Lippert's reading might not correlate with what the actual plays are. Uh-oh. Well, you saw Joey, like you were talking about the offensive coordinator, talking to one of the refs right now. So I'm assuming there might be something going on with substitution as well. And maybe some clarification, first game of the week, you want to make sure everybody's on the same page. But um, yeah, I see what you're saying with uh, kind of Joey getting a little frustrated, saying, hey, just pay attention to what, I, what I'm giving you. But one cool thing about Joey Tony is uh, he's a smart guy. Uh, he's been playing a long time in the league himself, uh, all different offensive line positions. And uh, him transitioning his first year as the offensive coordinator isn't a big jump. I, I think he's going to do well. Like I said, definitely knows the game. 
Lippard's going to get the ball, doesn't see the pressure, he gets it away, and that's going to bounce uh, on the ground, bringing up fourth down, I believe. You yes, know, it looked like Nico Lippert was throwing it to a spot that uh, number two, Terry um, Breezel, Jawan Breezel wasn't on the same page with. Uh, it was a good read on Nico's part, but I think, again, just to break down the communication between the two. Breezel kept uh, going inside. If he would have gone any further inside, that outside linebacker was there to clean his clock. Nico put it outside of him, but Breezel kept running inside. So it looked like Nico wanted Breezel to kind of stop in the zone right there, and Breezel kind of... I think that's one of those spot routes, Tony, where uh, you see it in Madden. For those of you who play Madden, know the, uh, the play spacing. The outside receiver finds the open spot going inside. Gotcha, gotcha. And we have the football god, Anthony Worthy Sr., set to punt this one away. Hey, this is the first time also we see Scott Thompson uh, on the field. He's number eight, their long snapper. And that's actually like we were talking about earlier, Tony. One of the problems it seems like Wolfpack was having on special teams is their long snapper. So I think this is their uh, typical guy. But, man, I'm telling you what, dude. When you see Scott Thompson will play his normal position at D-line, he is definitely a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> I, 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 Tony, uh, one thing I'm really looking forward to down the season as they uh, play a harder competition for the Wolfpack, seeing Laquise Taylor, number five, and Scott Thompson, number eight, on the D-line tearing it up. Yeah, it's going to be a sight to see, and I hope that everyone is going to be watching along as the Wolfpack pushing players in, and we're going to have another flag on the play. We were so clean in the first half and maybe the rest had a talk in the second half say we're gonna start throwing some of these flags around kind of litter up this field that was uh number zero Corey harris uh normally plays outside linebacker and safety uh he was doing the coverage on that and uh he hit the return man you can't do that when the guy lets it go if he's blocking okay but it, he's uh he's defenseless and it's one of those uh foul plays that they're going to get a penalty on. I think moving it right here kind of takes the window out. Sorry. Ugh. There we go. Raiders in the second half. Did they make a change at quarterback as well? Maybe trying to change some things out. Hey, but Possibly. what we do got going is number eight, Scott Thompson, is uh, on the field. Watch, left defensive end, guys, Scott Thompson. All six, five of them. We did make a change. That's going to be Tua playing quarterback. Tua, I think is how you want to pronounce that. Directing traffic. Play clock's winding down. Yeah, I'm going to say that's Ekipati Tuhua. And Tuhua rolls to his left. Says, hey, I'm just going to keep this one. Ooh, and he's going to feel that one on the right home. Believe that. Punishing hit right there from Nick that Morisosa from Parlier. Oh, that's right. He did say he was 75. That's right. Yeah, Nick Sosa, number 75, uh, playing outside linebacker. Last year, he played for the uh, Vikings, the Valley Vikings, before they merged with the Wolfpack, along with the Stallions who merged with the Wolfpack. And he was playing running back at uh, the Vikings. Another all-around talented guy. He actually played some running back at Fresno City. Raiders going to go ahead and break this huddle out. I think uh, a little change of quarterback is going to be a little change of pace. Going to go ahead and put three receivers kind of bunched up to the right. I take it back. They're getting out of that bunch. And that was nothing against number nine, Chanson, Chanson Sonora. He was actually doing a, a pretty decent job. Really scrambly guy. Yep. I mean, it's just this defensive line that the Wolfpack has is, is arguably one of the best, if not the best, in the league. We're just two guys. We haven't really seen a whole lot from the from this league. And now again, there's, I want to say five, maybe six teams that weren't around last year that were playing in other leagues around California. And... Uh, and I'm, I'm ready to see how everyone shakes out. I know we have a couple of games that look like they've already finished for the day. We have a couple of games going on right now. So I can't wait to see 
that's where it all lines up. Next week, we, uh, for those watching, are going to be down in Southern California in Lancaster, uh, which is just past the uh, grapevine as you're, you're driving toward L.A. Uh, the Wolfpack will be on the road in Lancaster, and this will be one of the new teams we're talking about. So their first game for the Wolfpack is from the upmost north team, and next week is the downmost south. Marking their, tor ter 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 marking their territory up and down the cut state. From the Raiders, say we're going to empty out this backfield, and our offensive line is going to block for two seconds, and they're not going to block for long enough, and that is going to be that might not, be a penalty. He yeah. threw to the lineman. I don't know if they're going to catch it or well, turn. Use I think the refs might use this moment to uh, show a little mercy, look away. Yeah, because that should have been intentional grounding or illegal touching, one or the other. I think they call it illegal participation. There you What's go. the term for throwing into a lineman? Um, it's going to be an eligible receiver. Or if he caught it, if it's, it's well, he touched it. He didn't catch it, but they threw it at the lineman and he dropped it. Yeah. Would so be uh, an eligible receiver. Yes. Yeah. I thought it hit the ground and he bounced up. He got it. To be perfectly honest with you, I could see it going either way. Either hit the ground or hit the it, hit the lineman. But it looks like they're counting it as uh, hitting the ground. Juwan Beasel, Terry Robinson back. Looks like it's going to go towards Breezel. They're going to just let it bounce around. No, nope. Terry's going to pick it up. That's what Terry does. If Terry has an inch to take it, he will, sir. Ooh, Terry Robinson reading. Oh, my goodness. He needs some milk. Two flags on the play. That was number 44, Darlon Hall, for those who saw. Uh, you know, I guess they're going to say he hit him with his helmet, but I, I, I don't know if it was necessarily that. I think it was just a good hit. I think he just lowered his shoulder and knocked him to the ground. Well, he was able to pop right up. This is football, ladies and gentlemen. We're not playing flag today. And uh, to be perfectly honest with you, penalty or not, Darian is not showing any remorse. <laughs> he uh, definitely uh, shuffled and swayed his way off that field. Almost proud he probably got the flag. Yep, they call the helmet. Yeah, like I said, I don't, I, from my angle, I can't, they're closer, but it, it didn't look like it, but what do I know? We have a, so that's going to negate that entire run pretty much, because that's going to be from the spot of the foul, pushing them back 15 yards, so Nico Lipper in shotgun, Reno Raiders. I think back, they were one back. man too short on offense. They only had 10 out there. Wow. I and saw two receivers, like, a running back, and a tight end. And it looked, it like, looked like the Raiders almost had too many men on the field, so the Raiders go ahead and call their first time out of the second half. And we're going to go ahead and take a listen to one of our... have a love for animals and want to share it with your family, then this is perfect for you. I recently went to a live animal show, and it was so much fun. There were all kinds of different animals, snakes, tarantulas, bunnies, birds, and even a tortoise. Plus, it was educational and interactive, so everyone could enjoy it. So if you want to bring some joy and education to your family, contact Reptile Ron. I like how they're up by 40 points and still arguing with each I other. I love it. We're back cool. on. And that is what I was saying in the first half, too. Up by 34, and they were competitive to win. Run. Oh. Great defensive play again. That guy has made a bunch of plays today. That's Quentin Taylor. Uh, he's from Michigan. He said, this California football soft. I'm going to be all up on you. And he, he has shown it. Uh, just the rest of his team, not quite on par with the intensity that we're seeing out of him. That was Joseph West, number 38 for the Wolfpack with the carry. Uh, lost two yards. Um, you know, it, it just seems like as soon as Joseph got that ball, he was met with a defender in his face. So what are you going to do? 
You're going to hold on nice and tight and not let that ball hit the ground. That's exactly what he did. And you're going to let Nico go ahead and call this next play. I mean, not Nico's not calling it, but Joey Haas is calling it. He sent it over to Nico. Nico's going to get it. He's going to let it fly. And he does. I like what I see right here. Almost just a little under. That was a great defensive play by That Cheryl was a Isaac. good defensive play, too. Last second, that corner made the breakup, man. But Nico, just a hair more. It was a nice dart. It was on the line. What are you going to do? You're going to bring up third and 12, and you're going to remedy that. That's what I, that's what I want to see. Ooh, Scott Thompson's in the huddle. I saw that. I don't know if he's playing O-line or tight end. Neither would surprise me. And it looks like it is going to be tackle. tackle, isn't it? Yes, it is. Unselfish Mr. Scott Thompson playing left tackle. Any way he can to make uh, to help his team. And we're going to go four skill positions to the left. Anthony Worthy Jr. all by himself on the right-hand side. You know, it's on the bunch side of the field, the short side of the by the hash mark, too, um, Tony. I never really understood what how many plays you can get by doing that, but let's see what they got. Well, you do leave Junior by himself, and we don't even look Junior's way, and that is going to be a catch. Beautiful strike by Nico Lippert. Better catch by Isaac Rivera from Madera, Crescent View South. This is his homeland, his home city. He's going to bring up the first down and the first completion for Nico Lippert of the day. You know, something I'm going to say, Tony, both quarterbacks, um, I mean, no one's perfect, but they are making good decisions, getting the ball out of their hands fast, throwing pretty solid, uh, getting good zip on the ball. And when the play breaks down, they'll both move it in the pocket well. So whatever happens, I think the Wolfpack are going to be good behind center. Lippert directing some traffic at why he has his uh, receivers out. I like what I see. The command of the offense is very nice as he had to maybe shake a couple of rust. He told him to come in the bunch formation, Tony. He had the receivers line up closer. Oh, just over the head of Barkley. You know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna write that one off on Nico. It looked like uh, looked like Austin Barkley pulled up, stopped running there. You got to keep going, big guy, especially downfield. Yeah, Lippard saw what, exactly what he needed to. He, Barkley had green grass in front of him, uh, and the ball was right where. It was I a mean, good decision made, no doubt. Yeah. So and I, like I said, good ball. I thought, like I said, Barkley. I think he should have just kept going. Second and ten. Rick Woods and Titus Grayson are going to be on your left-hand side, joined by Worthy Jr. Actually, you're going to go same as you had on that third down play. Uh, you have four. You got the quads formation yeah. there at the short side of the field. Nico's going to uh, get They the weren't ball. set. And they are going to say five yards. Other way. <laughs> Titus upset that he didn't get a chance to shake and bake on that play. Yeah, Tony, they were doing the uh, wide receiver screen, also known as the funnel screen, because you create like a funnel environment for the, sorry, tunnel screen. You create a tunnel-like dynamic for the receiver to follow the blocks. Um, and I think that's going to be their go-to for the quad formation, so I'm sure they'll come back to it. Little movement early, but no one calls it. Titus says, I'm going to make it happen again, make one defender miss, get a great block, and he's going to pick up a nice chunk. Not enough for the first down, but he is going to pick up a, a marginal amount to make it second. That looks and, close, um, man. Oh, uh, you're right. Yeah, just two yards short. Oh, I take it back. It's going to be, what, third and two. Yeah, number six, Titus, he definitely, uh, he's got the uh, shake and bake shiftiness he's putting on display right there. Strike right to the money from Lippert, and you just let your playmaker make plays. Reader, or excuse me, the Reno Raiders changing a couple players out. There is no one on the right slot. Uh, so that shows me that maybe the Raiders are in man, but they're going to go ahead and going to run that the other way. And that is not going to bring up the first down like you want. Is that 38 or 36? Joseph West. 
I love audibles, man. You see no one line up on Rick Woods, number double zero on the right slot. And I'm thinking like, hey man, just quick little hot seam or something. Yeah. I agree. I don't know. Unfortunately, you didn't call that. So it's going to bring up fourth and five now. Now Joey Haas is a lineman. They're always going to stick with the run. Let's see what Lippert does on this fourth down. He's going to let it fly, and that is going to be a catch backwards into the end zone. Juwan Breezel, hat trick, number three of the day. Good strike by Lippert, too, man. He put that on the line, Bubba. Nice little zip right over the corner. First read, read was open, and they cashed in. I think they're going to go for two again, Tony. I, I don't see the kicker coming out. Yep, Lippert's heading back out there. And, you know, when you're uh, when you're up by 46, you might as well go up by 48, just like you would Matt. Ah, uh, That's not what I was going to say, but I agree with four minutes and 17 seconds left in the third quarter. I was going to actually tell you that uh, with Lippert, you know, getting limited playing time, let's see how he is in the red zone. So yeah, he hasn't had a chance no yet. But either way, we're going to have a player coming on late for the Wolfpack, another one of those issues they did not have in the first half and it looks like it's they're going quads bunch again damian ross and that's going to be a quick pitch out to titus he's going to fall into the end zone and get the two-point conversion great play way to way to finish that one titus you know tony I, I don't know if you're noticing it but other than the long snapper i and that was early in the game i don't see any weak points in the wolf packs system i i don't their player personnel has depth and they can all ball man i i agree with you brayden and we're going to just listen to our sponsors for one moment whether it's a casual get together or a special occasion we've got you covered Foever is hosting a watch party for your favorite sporting event. So come in for food or drinks and enjoy the games you can't make in person. It's even better when we watch together. Dear Rick, Mario, and Mark, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be a part of something greater than myself. I promise to put forth my best effort to learn, to grow, and to always look for ways to help others. I hope that in my actions I bring excitement and respect to you and those around me. Thank you for believing in me. If you want to be a part of something greater than yourself, visit CFC of Football. For more information. Tired of rooting for your favorite team alone at home? Introducing one location for our watch party. Come here and eat, drink, and watch our games with fellow. Because I know I would be. Mejia, I'm going to go ahead and kick this one away. A little squib kick. It's going to show that it's going to cause problems. And the Raiders saying, hey, I've been hit enough today. I don't want to be hit again. That was number 84, Jordan Bernstein catching and taking with the run. I did not see what happened there at the end. They, uh, it looks like the Wolfpack's giving you, they, credits. I think that boy's been running his mouth, and he showed real quick that he didn't want to get hit again, and they let him have it. <laughs> he didn't even try. He ran straight out of bounds. I'm pretty sure that's what they're ragging on him for. That's funny. Four minutes and 11 seconds, third quarter. Scott Thompson playing DN. Simba Williams playing the other DN. Jason Gonzalez playing the right uh, D tackle. And you got Laquise Taylor, their go to playing the left nose tackle. This is a solid D line to be reckoned with. And so, I, as the Raiders' uh, offensive line has been eaten alive all day, I see this combination doing just what it's done all day. Good luck to Tahua. Tua says we're going to go and hand this round. Oh, way to fall forward through the defender, but that's going to bring up Edward Segura for a smashing hit to make it second and about, mm, we'll say six. You know, even with that penetration, you got to give it to number 20, Galvin Bailey of the Raiders, man. He still fell forward, brought all his umph, and at least got, what, three yards on it? Against yeah. this four, actually it looks like four. On this D-line, that's still impressive. Yeah, it does look like four yards to bring up second and six. 
three receivers to Tahua's left. Wolf Pack gonna kind of smother that run. He is gonna fall forward, but that's that was number ten, Edgar Segura with the with the hit. He's laying the wood, man. He came in there hot. Mm. Knocked that dude to the ground. And then the Raiders with another third down. They haven't been able to convert most of the day. Let's see if they're able to kind of change some things around here. To who is going to keep Austin Lavati on his left hand side, and he's going to put three receivers out to the left. Jaquees Taylor fixing up his gloves, saying, I am coming for you. Lavati heads out of the backfield and then right back to where he started. Third and three, this is manageable. I'm surprised they're actually not running it. Some time. Gonzalez coming down, balls flipped up. That's going to be a catch, spinning off the defender, picking up a first down. That is going to be, is that 11 or 81? It looks like it 11. is Ricky Rodriguez, the, the third, excuse me, who normally plays DB, but needing a spark on offense is making the catch for his team. You got to give it to number 14, too, the quarterback of the Raiders. Uh, you know, the pocket broke down quick. He escapes quick. I thought he was going to run it, but he still kept his eyes downfield and made a play. So uh, kudos to that guy. That was a big game. What was that, 11 yards? Yeah. Uh, it looked like about an 11 yard game. I was trying to figure out why we threw a flag. Maybe it's time by penalty. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking too. Uh, sorry, Bree, I wasn't listening. B. <laughs> I just saw Rick hand the keys to somebody. Warm up that car. <laughs> Get that, get that thing warmed up. We got a long drive ahead of us. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes until the third quarter ends. And the Raiders are going to go. Three you know, I don't know if right. you noticed it, Tony, but again, confusion on formation with the Raiders. Uh, I think the biggest takeaway is getting on the same page with their offense. It will help. It will definitely help. Um, it's taking time. And to be honest with you, I don't know if you've noticed an occurrence, but a lot of times when the receivers don't know when to line up, it's a run. Okay, yeah, and then... Uh, to me, that's a bit of a giveaway. Absolutely. Defenses, they'll cue off on that kind of stuff, too. They Defenses are always trying to predict what the offenses are doing. That's why you always want to take what the defense gives you, use their aggression against them. So, little things like that. I wouldn't be surprised if there's someone who does pick up on something like that. You know what, Braden? That is a high uh, football IQ and I appreciate that because I didn't pick up on it and I saw the receivers making their way so I think they know exactly what they're doing and I'm a, a soon pass. Honestly I'm just kind of making wow. stuff up as I go. No but you might be making it up but you're not wrong. Oh snap. Oh, oh man that dude. He's lucky that wasn't lower and he's lucky Anthony Worthy Sr. was being nice <laughs> because nine times out of ten that dude would have cracked back. He saw an opportunity to lay it down. Keenan Aggie right there, uh, the intended receiver threw up his left hand and it just grazed off the fingertips from Bloom High School. Oh. And that is gonna bring up third and 10, excuse me for my down and distance, been slack in the second half. To uh, letting his running back know exactly what he needs to hear. And that is going to be a flag on the play. We're going to say encroachment on the defense. I don't know. It looks like it might have been a false start. It looks like, uh, if I'm looking at this correctly. Oh, no. You're right. Encroachment on the defense. It was the. Yeah. So that should make I think they're, oh, nope, yep, run it, yep, okay. Third and five for let the, let the, side the Raiders. Call that one. I'm going to set that other camera up here in a second for the post game. The receivers to the right, and just like you said, those receivers are a dead giveaway if it's going to be a run or not. Braden, you're so smart. I play a lot of Madden. Ah! 
Madden, huh? That's what you're gonna call it? Yeah. Oh. Okay, I cheat. I this, put the opponent on rookie and I put myself on men. This guy's been playing football for the past two decades about every level you possibly don't, don't can. Don't tell him how old I am, Tony, to over this. <laughs> Played with this man when he was learning how to play quarterback and flag. I've seen him play JC. I've seen him play semi pro. I've seen him do it all. And but as far, I appreciate it, Tony. But as far as guys who are relevant and actually playing, that's the end of the third quarter. All right, we're going to go to our uh, sponsors. More. Our parties come with great entertainment and a lively atmosphere that will make you feel like you're right there on the field. Upgrade your game day experience by joining us at El Patron for our watch party on game day. Say you're a small business owner and you're looking to get your business in front of a targeted audience. Let me tell you a secret. You can get a promo for your business on our games. And what that promo will do is it will give you prominent placement. So instead of paying thousands of dollars for a small business ad space, you're paying a lot less in our broadcast, and you'll be able to get your business in front of a targeted audience. If you have a love for animals and want to share it with your family, then this is perfect for you. I recently went to a live animal show, and it was so much fun. There were all kinds of different animals, snakes, tarantulas, bunnies, birds, and even a tortoise. All right. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Coming back. First play of the fourth quarter is going to be aired out. Open receiver. Ooh, Ooh. over the head. Almost an interception. DJ Redman, number 11, safety. He, uh... He know he's gonna be regretting that later. He's gonna be thinking about it, and he should. That was right in your hand, sir. But like they say, that's why you play DB. Oh, he is gonna have words with you. Oh, he doesn't need to. He's a much better athlete than me. He already knows that. <laughs> Turnover on down. That's gonna bring up the wolf pack. Our fourth quarter sponsor is being sponsored by Reptile Ron Animal Presentations. They travel all throughout the state of California. I know you've seen a couple of commercials all day. Give them a call, give them an email, and let them know I sent you. As Lippert's gonna go ahead and uh, start with the ball at the 42 yard line, and he's gonna have three receivers on his left hand side and one receiver all by himself. Pressure. Lippert gets it away and they are going to say he was outside the tackle box and the ball made it past the line of scrimmage. Still also in the receiver's vicinity, but he had to, Tony. Uh, that right side of the line just came crashing down. Like I said, um, you know, their starting quarterback, Williams, he probably has a stronger arm, kind of a bigger guy, but Lippert's a shifty dude. He will run. He, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm predicting we'll at least see one run the, the uh, rest of this quarter from him as soon as he uh, has the opportunity to do it. So you're telling me Lippert's going to improvise, make something happen with his feet. I like it. That's going to be a run. Ooh. Little. Oh, fumble. Ball the other way. Reno trying to make something happen. Hurdles a man. But who's there? Scott Thompson to make sure that Reno does not score. Oh, I think he's hurt too, the uh, the guy with the recovery. Yeah, I saw that. I see what you're saying. The ball just was ripped out of the running back's hand. That was Julian Spencer from Tulare. Um And it just popped right into the defender's hand. Did you see who the defender was? Did you see the number on the defender at all? I didn't get a chance to happen so fast, to be honest with you. No worries. Well, the Raiders were able to at least get one turnover on the day. Usually you want to win the turnover battle. Um, but down 48 with 12 minutes and 40 seconds left. I it might be too little too late. <laughs> might? I don't know. Just might be. Are you, what's up? Ah! 
<laughs> three receivers to the left, two to the right. Tahula. Ooh, making some shaking and baking, trying to improvise. And oh, Lacrise Le Taylor is going to make sure that he does not get back up. I hope the quarterback's okay. Lacrise was being a gentleman by not laying it harder, to be honest with you, man. Yeah, that's going to push Reno back, unfortunate. They get one good play, and right after, it's spoiled by a bad play. Teua was just completely exposed there. Yeah. He's trying to improvise, slid. Could have been a lot worse. Could have been hurt a lot more. Yeah. The way that his knees kind of look, he could have been injured, but he's standing in there. He's saying he's okay, and he's going to put three receivers on his left-hand side single receiver on the right hand side and he is coaching up Austin Lavazzi right here and he says nope Austin you are going to go in the running back position but far out to the right with some time he he is ready to move instantly and oh, Jason no. Gonzalez with his sack he's been hungry for that all day dance it out buddy dance it out one of his nicknames is Pennywise because one he actually wears the mask of Pennywise before the games and two because he's crazy like him ah. and that is going to be third and I'm going to say 25 goodness gracious you get the turnover on defense and then your offense backwards, backwards, backwards. And that is what a complete team does with the Wolfpack. If their offense is going to turn it over, their defense has shown up and said, oh, wrong way. I'm looking at Nathan Sandoval here. One on one, gets where he needs to be. Oh! And that's not looking good. Oh, and Terry it. Robinson with the pick. Uh oh, Terry Robinson. He wants he wants to take this to a house call. Terry oh, yeah. Robinson is the kind of guy who will risk the safety to get more yards. And as we oh. see, it was a good investment. You know, Terry. man, that guy is probably one of the oldest ones on the roster, but more than the youngest at heart. And I got to say, man, when he was uh, young, he was just always known for his shiftiness. And it doesn't really look like he's lost much of a step. I couldn't agree more. And you're saying that he's one of the oldest on the roster. He has just taken up the, I don't want to even call it a hobby because it looks like he's taking it way more serious than a hobby of boxing. Yeah, I saw some of uh, his uh, exposure on Facebook as well. Yeah, and he, he looks like he, he's making a name for himself. And I want to say the Alleman boxing uh, team is having a, a match today as well um, out in the Bay Area. So I hope that everyone out there with the Alleman boxing community is safe and I hope they all win today and Lippert is going to take over again in this fourth quarter he's going to put Rick Woods far out to the left oh movement and that is going to push the offense back Lippert's like hands in the air what are you guys doing I didn't even <laughs> didn't even do anything yet my guess, Tone, that was a run. Offensive line was hungry to lay it down. <laughs> I, think the, I think the offensive line is, and the whole team is ready to just go home with nine minutes left in the game, and you're absolutely right. Another run right up the middle, and I'm going to assume that's Joseph West. It says 38 on my paper, 36 on his chest. We're going to say Joseph West. At the, end of the day, at the end of the day, number one in your heart. Aww. Got back to the line of scrimmage on that, so it's going to be second and 15. Eight minutes, 30 seconds left. Lippert with the ball. Throws it across the middle, and unfortunately, Number 28, Damian Ross. He's uh, Him and Austin Barkley are the uh, two go-to tight ends. It looks like Damian's head wasn't even around. He wasn't even expecting it. That was a really good ball by Nico. That's exactly what I was saying. Uh, if the tight end would have turned around and would have had a chance to look at the ball, Damian Ross might have had a chance to catch it. But Both these quarterbacks are making good decisions and delivering very catchable balls. If uh, receivers are all good, 
but uh, there's definitely some rust slowing these guys down right now, it feels like. And as the season progresses, you expect the rust to just kind of wear itself off? Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Lippert, third and 15. Let's it fly across the middle. Oh, bad camera angle, but that is a catch and a first down and dragging defenders like they're little children on his back. That's Titus Grayson. Yeah, Titus. Uh, honestly, man, it's like I keep saying, dude, all these guys are good. All these guys bring something to the table. They are stacked, honestly, in all positions. Um, if I'm another team about to play the Wolfpack, it is intimidating. I would be thinking about this if that's the week I have to play them. <laughs> I mean, the, the Wolfpack, let's just be real, man. They're sending a message. They don't even have their starters out there, and they're dominating. They're not ranked number one right now in the league, but I think that might change soon. Lippert's going to hand this one off, going to just chug forward. Looks like we have another running back, Trinity Parker, who also plays safety, coming from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He's got some of that cheese in his blood. That's going to be second and five as Lippert is getting the play from Joey Haas once again. Joey Haas has done a fantastic job of mixing it up, run and pass. What I like too is uh, all the players get a chance to get on the field to do something. All the receivers, tight ends, running backs, and quarterbacks. They're getting good exposure, and they, like you just said, Tony, they have a pretty versatile offense, man. Four spread set offense. Flipper taking his sweet time, but gets the ball. Takes the handoff. We're going to do a triple option. There it is. Quarterback run, just like you suspected some point in this game. And he jumps, or excuse me, dives out of the way of getting hit to bring up a third. And we're going to call that three. I will say, though, constructive critique, I think he should have pitched it. If he, uh, I think he was hungry for the yards. And then last second, he realized, ah, I'm going to have to take it because he didn't want to pitch it and mess it up. But uh, at least it's still positive yards. Good read. And the clock is ticking five minutes, 34 seconds seconds till the end of the game. Lippert's getting his third down play as the Raiders are trying to make an adjustment on defense and it looks like they get it in time. So we're getting a lot of uh, positive feedback about the commentary on the feed, Tony. And I just want to say thank you to everyone. And also, you guys have very good taste. <laughs> and that is going to be a first down run for Trinity Parker. And uh, I appreciate the kind words as well. Uh, we are all wearing multiple hats today between being cameramen and doing the overlays and everything else that goes involved in making this stream happen so and we want to uh, thank the wolfpack also for and the players and the coaches for giving us the opportunity to bring you the game yes more good games to come this season guys yes and again next week we will be down in i think lancaster plays their home games in palmdale so we're going to be bumping some Afro man on the way down there as Lippert gets the ball, <laughs> looks to the end zone. It's uh, going to just be, a little overthrown. Yeah. That one, we will say, was on Lippert. He I, saw, I'm going to two. I'm going to two. He saw the green grass that Woods had in front of him and said, hey, go for it. Now, again, con constructive criticism. He lets that ball just give a little more ha ang hair, uh, hair time. And Woods is able to get under that and run that one in. You know, but at the same time, man, you, we all know this. It's as they say heavy is the head that wears the crown and quarterback president any leader people always judge what's going on without really understanding what's going on um, one of the big things with with offense you always hear is timing and when you're only practicing once twice a week in semi-pro things like that are going to happen there's a handoff right up the middle. Trinity gets Ooh. grabbed down high. Face oh, mask. they're going to say face mask. And I take that back. That is Marcus Maurice McLean on the carry. But both of the, uh, what's it called? Yeah, I don't think they want you to stop the rest of the day on the time. Both of the refs are going to see that and call the flag and get an extra 15 yards for the Wolfpack like they absolutely need any extra. But if you're going to rip my running back down by the face mask, I want another 15 yards as well. And I don't mean my running back, but any running back. 
Maurice says, I want that again. I, I saw how giant that hole was. Put me back in, coach. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get my likes on social media. Ah. There we go. I'm hoping that by moving the camera back a little like this, we're not going to run into the corners like we did last time. So three receivers on the right. Lippard. Bunch side. Gets the ball. Looks to the, the right, right. Throws it. And that Ooh. is just another great defensive play by the defensive backs. They, they've made some really good plays all day long. That's Mitchell Harris. You've heard his name earlier. You're going to hear it probably again today. Uh, he has been one of their most consistent, probably the most consistent uh, of the secondary for the Raiders. Um, even plays have been over his head. Sometimes we're out of his zone. He's always uh, breaking on the ball pretty well. Right there, it almost was a pick. Yeah. He knocked that ball down, and that is going to bring up second and ten. Lipper is going to have two receivers on the left. One of them is Anthony Worthy Jr., and that's what we mean. Up 48-0, football in the blood. Most everyone's taking the day off, and Maurice, again, saw the crease, and he took that for a first down, I believe, and that's going to bring up first and goal at the five-yard line. So we I'm gonna got have to uh, use that more throughout the day what? or more throughout the year. Maurice found the crease. I Maurice like found the I crease. Like that. That's a good one. He is their speed back, like we've been saying. He sees the hole and he takes it. And Lipper fakes it, throws it to the end zone. Ball hits the ground in between two different receivers. But you will live to see another day. Clock is continuing to run, even though normally it would stop. But with a 48-0 lead, everybody wants this game to end. I'm surprised they actually threw it there, Tony. I, uh, I guess it's to you know give Nico a little love so he can get do something on the uh, a little more on the board. Get some stats on the year. Normally, though, I think they would just run it in from this close. <laughs> My guess is that's what they're going to do now. 50 seconds till the end of the game. Lippert in shotgun. Nope. Lippert to the end zone. Lippert. There we go. Touchdown, Ross. Wait, wait, wait. Is there? That was Damian Ross. Multiple flags on the play. Are we taking that back? I got him. Holding. Holding. Offense. Push him. Push him back. You know, man, honestly, it didn't look like they didn't even need to. Uh, Nico Lippert, he got that ball off so quick, man. He made the read and just zipped it in there. Yeah, Damian was wide open, back of the end zone. That offensive line, hands on the knees. They're tired. 40 seconds. This is the final play of the game. Unless for some reason the Wolfpack decides that they're going to run a hurry up after this, but they could honestly kneel it right here, but it's semi pro. Movement, that's going to do it. Seventeen seconds. They did stop the clock. I'm assuming it's going to run, and they're not even going to let them. Nope. And looks like that's going to be our game, guys. Oh no! I take it back. Timeout, Wolfpack. Well, hey, I mean that's just how they roll, man. Always uh, pedal to the metal, no mercy. I got to say with the uh, with the pack. Well. I the mean, mercy thing, to an extent, not like being cruel, but they're, they're not ever going to stop bringing full force in one way or another. The one thing that I can say that I'm that is maybe a little different than years in the past is uh, you're playing for rankings. Um, and just like in college, you want to run the score up because that helps your ranking. So um, yeah. I, I, that I also leads to seeding, too, which eventually will contribute because if you have and this is actually a controversial topic in the league right now is some teams are going to play nine games some teams are playing ten so how do you determine who gets to move forward and whatnot and the college system a lot of times they'll base it off the points that you scored and have a voting system of a committee so we'll see and you're absolutely right Braden. um 
at the end of the year, there's going to be a team that's seven and three, and there's going to be a team that's seven and two. The seven and two technically has a greater win percentage than the seven and three team, but sometimes it's getting, that one. Who's getting bumped out of out of the playoffs? The top six teams are going to make the playoffs. The one and two will have a bye the first week, and and you're. I know all the top teams. They're trying to have a bye that first week. Save your players. Health. Lippard with the ball. Slippard looks to the right to the end zone, and that is going to be out of bounds. Doesn't stop the clock here, and with nine seconds left, that is going to do it unless the Wolfpack called another timeout, which they are obliged to, but that is it. That's the game, the guys. Game. And so... This is a tough one for me, Brayden. I, I'm putting my offensive token for Jawan Be Beasel. I, I, I'm going to have to agree with you too, man. I mean, there were a lot of good players. Uh, Worthy Jr., um, even uh, number six, uh, Tights and uh, Grayson, he showed a lot. Taji in the beginning with the run in the ball. But overall, uh, I'm, I'm going to agree with you, Beasel. So we're going to have Jawan Beasel, our offensive player of the game, um, our trainer Trenches, player of the game. I, I, I got LaQuest Taylor, multiple sacks on the day. Not even uh, a competition, to be honest with you. Yeah, and, and something that we plan on doing here throughout the season is we want to highlight the trenches. Um, so often it gets overlooked. And so we have our offensive player of the game, Jawan Beasel, our, D, our, excuse me, our line player of the game, or the trenches player of the game, LaQuest Taylor. And now we need a defensive player of the game. Do you have any... Uh, yeah, tell me what you think. Um, I mean, honestly, if it's my call, if separated, even though he, he got uh, the trenches, I'd still go with the Queese, uh, just because you always constantly put the most pressure on, had the most sacks or tackles for loss. I, I don't disagree with what you're saying right there, but I am going to throw a different name in the hat just because I don't want to give Laquise too, <laughs> uh, spread the love. two awards today, but I'm going to go with this man right here, Simba Williams who had the first two sacks of the day and I'm going to name him my defensive player of the game and, and we appreciate everybody for being with us uh, we're only going to grow and get better when we have more teammates working with us here and uh, and I just want to say uh, it's all love all day always when you aim with love you never miss even if you don't hit the target you're aiming for if, you're, if your actions are filled with love, you will hit the target you need to.